Hello, baseball fans. You're watching On Deck with Tyler Redman. Welcome to On Deck. I'm Tyler Redman. As always, thank you so much for checking out the channel. I do appreciate it. Uh, I've been trying to get in here for a while, had some technical problems, but we are on the air and we should be good to go for the night. So uh, a lot of news going on, as you can tell. I've been scrambling trying to get this on to you because obviously a big surprise, the Oakland Athletics, of course, traded first baseman Matt Olson uh, to the Braves for outfielder Christian Pache, Shay Langoliers, Ryan Cusick, uh, and Joey Estes. Uh, I might be getting those names wrong. Those guys are minor leaguers. They're both starting pitchers, uh, but they're also pretty big deals in the Braves minor league organization. Uh, we'll talk about more of that in just a second. Uh, but let's get inside the trade for just a second. Uh, obviously, uh, this could potentially mean the end of an era in terms of Freddie Freeman in Atlanta. We'll talk more on that later. But for right now, let's go inside the trade. Of course, again, the Braves receive Matt Olson, uh, who is a prolific First baseman, uh, Gold Glover uh, has improved every year, is on an upward trend, and he's got a lot of uh, future ahead of him. But we did give a lot up, as you can see. Again, Christian Pache, Shea Langoliers, Ryan Cusick, and Joey Estes. Now, if you look to the right, you'll see those numbers in yellow. Basically, what I'm showing you there is that is where they were ranked before they were dealt in the Braves minor league system. So again, your number one prospect, Christian Pache, your number two prospect in Shea Langoliers, number six, Ryan Cusick, he was a 2021 first round draft pick by the Braves. And of course, number 14th, Joey Estes. Obviously a very big deal for the Braves and getting Matt Olson uh, a lot attached to this. Been all over the news in baseball today uh, because Freddie Freeman has been all over the news. And we'll talk about, again, we'll talk about Freddie Freeman in depth later on in the broadcast. But give me time. I promise we'll talk about it. Uh, again, Matt Olson, his best year at the plate was last year. Uh, here's the stats real quick. Uh, 271 batting average, 371 on base, 540 slugging, 153 hits, 39 homers, and 111 RBIs. The guy's good. There's no doubt about that. He's a great player, and I, to be honest with you, I think we all know that. He's such a good player that a lot of you, uh, I've seen a common trend where people are saying, if not Freddie, then Matt Olson. And whether that's you or not, this is how a lot of people are looking at this current trade, and this is how a lot of people are looking at it before the trade even happened. Uh, so again, very big deal. But let's exclude Freddie Freeman from the discussion for just a second. Let's focus in on the trade. Matt Olson is projected to make $12 million this year, plus he's under team control until 2024. We gave up a lot. We gave up a lot of our minor league system in this deal. And to be honest with you, that's what surprised me here. Not that we got Olson, because you'll understand what I'm saying here. Olson was a foregone conclusion. If Freddie Freeman didn't work out, we knew that the Braves were going to go target Matt Olson without a doubt. I wasn't surprised that we traded Pache, our number one prospect. I thought he was going to be a trade piece at some point. Not surprised that it's here. Uh, that's what people are going to want. They're going to want that number one trade piece. And to be honest with you, the Braves have given him plenty of chances at the major league level. Uh, had he performed, that might have gone differently. But I don't think uh, the Braves really shed too many tears. Uh, obviously, he did. And don't get me wrong, I I'm sure the Braves would have liked to have seen him grow in their uh, in their organization, but again, this is a guy who I told you weeks ago could be a part of a trade package with a catcher. I was right. It turns out it was Shea Langoliers. Shea surprised me the most, believe it or not, mainly because every article out there, including me on this channel, we all talked about how Contreras was going to be the trade piece out of those two because of the timetable. You got Darno for two years. You got Manny Pena for two years. The timetable set it up for Shea Langoliers to be the catcher of the future for the Braves. Didn't turn out that way. But I think this shows a new mindset by the Braves' front office. I think it clearly says that the future is not the priority, which is a different mindset than we've had in a long time. Usually, we take things slow. We focus on our minor league system. And I know you know what I'm talking about. How many deals have we backed out of, the Braves being we? How many have... How many deals have the Braves backed out of because the other team wanted too much, right? How many times has that happened? How many times have the Braves been criticized for not being more aggressive in those deals? 
I think the Braves are well aware of what they traded, the value of what they traded. But now they're being criticized for actually pulling the trigger and making these trades for instant impact. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with the attachment of Freddie Freeman. Again, we'll talk on that in a second. But the Athletics have to win this trade in their mind, too. And I got a feeling that they targeted Shea Langoliers because they know of his potential. Uh, if I know about it, they certainly do. Um, we're not going to know who won this trade for years. I mean, we might look at it and reflect on it one day. That's really how this usually goes. Uh, but usually they pan out well for Alex Anthopoulos, uh, if history tells us anything. Um, but part of why you have prospects, and a lot of people have you know, said that the Braves overpaid tremendously in this trade. One more time. They say that they've overpaid tremendously here. And to be honest with you, I think on paper they probably have. But I think the biggest trade piece here is likely going to be Shea Langoliers. And that number doesn't say it up there, but I think he's your number one trade piece here. I, I truly do. Catching is a lost art. Shea Langoliers is prolific at it. He's great uh, in the minor league system. He's going to hopefully develop into being a great major league catcher. And uh, his talents are well known around the league. And again, it's a rare art. There are very few good catchers these days, especially good catchers that can hit. And that's a valuable prospect to have. And if you're the A's, who the A's are a lot like the Rays. They're constantly rebuilding. They always want prospects. Without a doubt, they always want prospects. So this says a lot about that. I mean, obviously, that's why they took four prospects and we got Matt Olson. And by the way, if you're not excited about Matt Olson, again, let me tell you, this guy is going to be good. I promise you. We don't know exactly how it's going to be set up yet. We don't know where he's going to be in the lineup. We don't know if he's going to be a DH. We don't know what the situation is going to be. But what we do know is, for right now, he is an Atlanta Brave. Uh, so how does Matt Chapman stack up against Freddie Freeman? That's the question everybody wants an answer to, right? Here you go. This is last year's stats. On the left, Matt Chapman or Matt Olson, rather, sorry, and on the right, Freddie Freeman. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think they're fairly even. I mean, Matt Olson's going to have more RBIs, more homers, uh, but Freddie's going to have more hits, right? I mean, Olson's a, uh, Olson's a power guy more so than Freddie a little bit, but at the end of the day, that is Freddie Freeman, and I know that there's a lot of emotion attached to that. So, again, we're going to uh, confirm that. We are, we're, we're going to talk about that in a second, I promise you. But, again, remember this. Uh, remember what Jock Peterson said when he came over to the Braves after Ronald Acuna got hurt. He was never going to be Ronald Acuna. Matt Olson is never going to be Freddie Freeman, but let's hope he's going to be the best Matt Olson that we've seen in the league yet. Uh, that's how I feel about it. I hope you do too. Um, so where does that leave the future of Freddie Freeman? I think that's what a lot of people are talking about right now. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think there's some interesting topics uh, to talk about here because... There's a lot of little things, because as of right now, Freddie Freeman is not gone. Freddie Freeman is still technically an Atlanta, a career Atlanta Brave. He has not signed to another team yet. Uh, and to be honest with you, there is nothing I can say about Freddie Freeman that has not been said before. Uh, we're all aware of who Freddie Freeman is. We're all aware of what he's meant to the Atlanta Braves. With that said, baseball is a business. Uh, much like Christian Pache said today in his uh, goodbye tweet to Atlanta, it is a business. In a lot of our eyes, it's a game. Uh, but for players and teams who are getting paid by these organizations, it's a business. And I hate that we're most likely looking into a future where Freddie Freeman is not spending his entire career in a Braves uniform. But in this day and age, unfortunately, that's how it is. Uh, players don't stay with teams their whole careers anymore, not if they're going to play for a long period of time. I mean, think about it. Smoltz played for other teams. Glavin played for another team. Hank Aaron, Phil Necro. Greg Maddox didn't even start as a Brave or finish as one. Dale Murphy went to the Phillies and then to the Rockies. Andrew Jones. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I know a lot of people have compared Freddie Freeman to Chipper Jones uh, in, in terms of their similarity in clubhouse leadership, right? Chipper Jones is a rarity. Staying with an entire team for a career is a rarity. And if you don't remember, Chipper didn't always get top dollar on his contracts. He wanted to be a Brave, and he took pay cuts to be a Brave. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, that's the only way it happens in today's day and age. Again, it's a rarity. Um, it, it's nobody's fault. I know a lot of people are going to throw blame at the Braves' front office. It's how it always goes. But it's really no one's fault. 
Um, we don't know what happened behind closed doors. We don't know what happened on the phone. We probably never will. And it, if it's a failure, it's a failure on both ends to meet in the middle. Freeman was talking to other teams. We're well aware of that. He was talking to the Dodgers. He was, I think now he's talking to the Blue Jays. Uh, I mean, it's been five or six different teams. And Anthopolis, who, by the way, Anthopolis had a really tough interview, uh, choking up, uh, trying to answer questions about this topic. It was obviously a hard decision for him. Um, but he had to put the organization first, and he had to put the team first. So I can appreciate that. I, I, I'm glad that I didn't have to make that decision, right? I'm sure you're glad that you didn't have to pull that trigger as well, if that's what it's going to be. There is still a chance that we get Freddie Freeman back, uh, but for right now it is looking bleak. Um, you know, he, he made a move, Alex Anthopoulos, he made the move because he views the Braves' next five years as the best window for a repeat, obviously, and for maybe maybe even more championships than that. I mean, they want to strike now. And to be honest with you, after winning the World Series, that's a good mindset to have. And I think confidence is key there. Uh, but again, you know, <laughs> this is not going to impress you guys, but Alex Anthopoulos, if we don't go get Freddie Freeman, Alex Anthopoulos has Freddie-level money to now shop around and go target some of these free agents. By the And if you're unaware there is a free agent frenzy going on right now uh and you may see some improvements elsewhere maybe to the pen maybe to your bench uh maybe to the outfield whatever it is you may can still see more improvements because anthopolis has been hinting at more improvements uh the the entire year uh so that'll be interesting but as for freddie freeman he is not gone yet uh he is still an atlanta brave he is likely moving on but crazier things have happened. If he is on his way to another team, I wish him all the best. I hope you do too. Uh, he's a first-class guy all the way. And again, we all know what he's meant to the Atlanta Braves. And of course, uh, if that's how it ends for him in Atlanta, he went he went out on the highest note possible, a World Series championship. So, you know, um, it, it's been an interesting day. I, I hate that uh, we're staring at a future that possibly doesn't have Freddie Freeman on the Atlanta Braves. But again, that's how baseball is at the moment. That's just what it has become. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are going to be stunned by it. I am too, to tell you the truth. To be honest with you, I thought Freddie Freeman uh, was going to get paid his money and we were going to move on, uh, especially after Dansby Swanson uh, called it out publicly at the parade, you know, re-signed Freddie. Uh, I, I thought it was, again, a foregone conclusion that that was going to happen. But again, Matt Olson, guys, this is somebody to be excited about. Again, he is a he's a young player. He's going to fit in well with our infield. Uh, I think that's an important note. Don't get me wrong. Freddie was great, but this guy might be able to carry on with Austin Riley and Dansby and Ozzy even longer. You know, if they want to keep that core together, he might be able to do that for a little bit longer than Freddie could. And you know, at the end of the day, if the Braves gave their best offer and Freddie uh, didn't take it and the Braves didn't add on to that, I don't blame them for moving on. It is a tough decision to make, uh, but when you take emotion out of it, when you take feeling out of it, and when you take uh, just attachment out of it, and you think about the logistics, and you think about everything that goes into it, it makes sense, uh, it, depending on the dollar figure. We don't know the dollar figure. I wish I did. That way I could really give you an analysis of what I think. But for right now, that's where I'm at. So let's look at what you guys got to say. I appreciate you guys tuning in, by the way. Harmon Johnson, good to hear from you. He says he is stunned. He never thought he'd see the day that Freddie Freeman left. I know it's not 100% confirmed, but it's more than likely not. Yep, that's the mood right now, right? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough day for Atlanta fans. It's going to be a tough day for Atlanta fans, and I completely understand that. But again, not 100% confirmed. Think about it. I think it was the Twins that did a flip the other day where they literally signed somebody. I think it was uh, Isaiah kind of Falefa. They moved him almost as soon as they got him. So, in theory, maybe the Braves flip Olsen. I mean, and honestly, guys, with the DH, anything's a possibility. I mean, you might see Olsen DH, Freddie play first. Maybe they, you know, alternate uh, and have Ozuna in the outfield full time. Maybe you trade Ozuna and fill in the, the gap that way. There is possibility. I do find it interesting that Freddie Freeman has not signed yet because all indication signed somewhere yet because all indications were that Freddie Freeman was basically going to be, it was going to be between the Dodgers and the Braves. 
And once the Braves seemingly moved on, you would have thought that Freddie Freeman would have instantly moved on. It has not uh, gone that way. It has not. I'm checking tweets now, but it has not gone that way. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't know what the next move for Freddie Freeman is. I've heard the Blue Jays. He is a dual citizen in Canada, so maybe there's you know, a, a move there. Maybe he's debating those two teams, but there's been so many different rumors out there, and the Braves, credit to them, the Braves front office do not talk about something that is unfinished. They'll talk about a finished product, but when it comes to possible trade deals, possible free agent signings, they do not talk, and that is a valuable thing to have. That is a thing that I don't think gets enough credit. They don't, and I respect it, because we don't know what's going on, and that's a good thing. Uh, William Fulgham, good to hear from you, buddy. Hadn't heard from you in a while. Good deal for the Braves. Sorry to see Shea go, but Olsen will be a stud. That's a good way to put it. I mean, Shea had a bright future, whether it's with the Braves or whether it's somewhere else. I think Pache may have a bright future, uh, but Shea's the guy that I, I have my eye on for a long time. He is a guy that I think uh, is going to be great behind the plate, if he, especially if he's able to get under somebody. I was hoping it would be Darno, but under a veteran, who can give him, you know, the runaround and the the expertise and re and really raise him as a catcher, so to speak. But yeah, I mean, look, Olson's gonna be a be the guy. We, I mean, look at he had thirty nine homers last year, you know, and that's something that I know isn't the only stat out there, but that's that's gonna mean something. He's a lefty bat, which with the loss of Freddie, if that's the case, we don't have a lot of lefties. I mentioned that the other day. We really don't have a lot of lefties. You look at our lineup. Ronald Acuna, righty. Dansby Swanson, righty. Duvall, righty. Uh, Ozuna, righty. Ozzie Albies is a switch hitter, but he's a lot better on the right side. So we just don't have a ton of lefties. Freddie was probably our pe well, definitely our best lefty hitter, and we just don't have very many of them. Big reason why I want to go get Eddie Rosario if we don't get another free agent. Uh, but again, I, I think it's interesting. I think it's uh, obviously a very big deal in Atlanta. I think it's a very big deal across Major League Baseball. To be honest with you, I was thinking that once Freddie Freeman got signed, the floodgates would open, and you'd see Chris Bryant get signed. You'd see Anthony Rizzo get signed. I figured he would set the price for the entire market. That has not been the case. They are starting to bypass that and move on. Uh, you haven't seen Chris Bryant yet. You haven't seen Rizzo, because I do think Freddie may set their price, but you've seen some other guys get signed, a lot of guys. Uh uh, notable Braves that have moved on. Jock Peterson is still out there on the market, but A. Ray Adrianza has moved on. Jorge Soler and Eddie Rosario are still out there. I believe the Braves are in, at least on Soler. Haven't heard anything on Rosario. But, uh, yeah, it, it it's interesting. I, I don't know what you guys are thinking about it. I know, obviously, it hurts. Um, but at least we got a World Series with Freddie Freeman. I think that's something to focus on and to think about. Caleb Cox, I'm finally in time for another live stream. Good to hear from you, man. Glad you made it. Uh, hopefully you can be in time for some more. Uh, Harmon says he's going to miss Pache too, along with Shea. Uh, yeah, Pache, you know, I, I really think there's a lot of potential in Pache. I, I think he, you know, un this is going to sound bad when I say it, but I think, you know, he kind of got under the umbrella that he's going to be the next Andrew Jones. And a lot of people had super high expectations for him. I mean, that guy hit a postseason homer his first one, you know, in, in his first postseason. He's not a bad player at all. He's a great center fielder. I think if he gets his bat moving, he'll be a great player. Uh, but we'll see what happens with that. Brett Walters, who do you think the Braves go after next? Brett, I'm going to be honest with you. I would not be surprised if they're still targeting Freeman. And I know that sounds nuts. I mentioned it a minute ago. I know it sounds crazy. But I would not be surprised if they're still going after Freddie because, look, even with Matt Olson and all of what we gave up for him, they're only paying him $12 million a year, okay? And that's nothing. We're paying Ozuna $16 million, I think. So I'm just saying it's not breaking the bank with Matt Olson right now because he is such a young player, a very good young player, but he is still a young player. Uh, but with I think they still might be targeting Freddie and, and you know reading their options. They're certainly going after Jorge Soler. I've heard that. Would not be surprised if they go after Rosario. They might be checking in on Jock. I really think Jock is going to do whatever he wants to do based on his Twitter feed, to tell you the truth. Um, Jock's going to pick wherever he wants. I mean, his, his World Series run with the Braves, I think, put his name out there a lot. A lot of people 
want a player like that, but they probably don't want to break the bank for Jock Peterson. But uh, he wants to go somewhere that he can play every day. I, I see your comment down there, Garrett. Jock wants to go somewhere that he can play every day because w w when, he, when it comes to Jock, I mean – he went to the Cubs. He, he left the Dodgers and, and gets signed by the Cubs to play every day. The only reason he came to the Braves is because the Cubs had a fire sale at the deadline, or right before the deadline, and they got rid of everybody. Kimbrell, Peterson, Rizzo, I mean, they got rid of everybody. And with that, I mean, I think Jock went to the Braves, got a championship. Now he wants he wants the next step. He wants to play every day, but good comment. Oren Griswold, good to hear from you. He said he's not going to dwell on the loss of Freddie as much as it hurts. Hopefully this will allow us to add more pieces with the money we'll save. I'd love to see Rosario and or another solid pitcher. I think that's a good way to look at it. Uh, not really sure who's left on the market in terms of uh, starting pitchers. I think we probably... Yeah, I, I feel like pitchers have been pretty much picked up. Uh, but I think I think Rosario would be a great pickup. I've said that since the beginning Basically, since the end of the season last year, I think he was a definite pickup in my mind. Uh, surprised that I haven't heard anything on it. Again, I've heard stuff on Solaire, uh, but I'd like to hear more on Rosario. I think that guy uh, would be a great bat in our lineup. I really do. Wilmer Chinchilla. That's an interesting name. Never heard from you, but good to hear from you. Hope you'll subscribe. I'm hoping they gave away so much with that good idea that they can extend Olsen. Um... Maybe uh, they, they they might extend Olsen depending. I mean, obviously he's got to see how the next we got to see how the next few years go with him. There, there's a lot more left. Um, it, you know, he's got this. I think he he hit arbitration this year. He's projected to hit 12 million. That is not official, but he is projected to hit 12. He goes into arbitration again next year, so he'll make a little bit more money. Uh, nothing that's going to kill the kill the bank um, necessarily, but. Um, I don't know. I, I think, you know, depending on how he plays, I don't see why the Braves couldn't extend, depending on, obviously, you know, last year's the World Series run, that all that profit all helped the Braves. Uh, depending on, you know, how we're doing money-wise, I don't see why we couldn't extend if we want to. Uh, it's not like we have a first baseman waiting uh, in the wings in the minors, so maybe. We'll see. Uh, we might test out the market as well, because that seems to be Alex Anthopoulos' way of doing things. Uh, Ronnie says, Freddie started talking to another girl. Next thing you know, we are seeing other people. The breakup became inevitable. Now we got to go to a new girl who has all the measurements and she is younger. Jesus. Okay. Uh, I, look, I mean, this, at the end of the day, it, it, it's, it's a business, right? It, it, it's a business. Um, I, I, I hate that it happened this way. Uh, but Freeman, I'm sure had a dollar figure in his mind and a year, uh, in his mind. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is, guys, and he's not gone yet, so we'll see. I, maybe the Braves called his bluff. I've heard reports from MLB Network. I heard a report saying that the Braves did not consult with Freddie when they went and got Matt Olson. Uh, not surprised by that, uh, but they did not tell him that they were going to do that. And what, no matter what you think about it, they don't have to. Uh, it is a business. Trinity Clark, uh, the ownership group written all over it, and they are some of the worst owners in the league. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about all that. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, they got to make money too, right? I, I think owners a lot of time get a bad rap, you know, and I'm not defending owners in anything. Uh, let me make sure to tell you that. But I think a lot of the time owners get a bad rap because they got the money, right? They're, they're these guys that we don't see a lot of. They're not popular. Uh, they're not really out there a lot. They don't speak a whole lot. Uh, they're just out there, and they pay the players. They fund the teams. That's pretty much all you know about them. Not saying they're not greedy. They very well may be. Uh, but I do think they get a bad rap to some degree. They have to make money, right? And if one player wants more than what they can budget, you know, it is what it is. And with Freddie, Freddie's talking to five or six different teams. Who knows where that price has gotten? You know, I think it started at five-year 180, you know, and then it got to be six years 200 or whatever, whatever, the, you know, there's no telling where it is now that you've negotiated with the Dodgers and negotiated with the Yankees, you know, and, you, and you've been getting all these offers. There's no telling what he wants. And, you know, he, he may change his mind and change his tune and decide uh, to take a, a hometown discount. But for right now, um, you know, he's the one that got away. Uh, what's up, Blake? 
Rick Prada says Solaire or Rosario. I'm going Rosario. I know we're in on Solaire, but I like Rosario. Uh, I, I think he is, you know, again, a consistent bat. I think he proved that all postseason long. I think, uh, you know, he proved it really the latter half of the season whenever he came back healthy. He proved that uh, he, he is a very good player, and I think he's a good outfielder. You know, I don't know how long I want him. I don't know what kind of deal I want with him, uh, but I want Rosario out of those two. Solaire, great moments with the Braves last year. I'll remember him forever. I would rather have Rosario all day long. Uh, I mean, you look at that NLCS last year against the Dodgers. I mean, that dude absolutely waxed him. I mean, it was nuts. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, I think he is the only one, uh, only free agent that I look at and am like, I want that guy. I like Jock. I think Jock brought a lot of good energy. I like Jorge Soler. He hit a ball that hasn't landed yet. You know, I get all that. But at the end of the day, Rosario is consistent, and he's a left-handed bat. And that is something that a lot of people don't think about. He is a left-handed bat, and I think that's something that you have to consider when you're putting the lineup together. We don't have a lot of lefties. And if we can get some more lefties, that would be nice. None of those guys are going to the bench. I guarantee you not one of them are going to the bench. They are too valuable. They are going to want too much money to sit on the bench. And it is what it is. Um, oh, Lord. Caleb Cox wants to know about Puig. Puig is an interesting an interesting guy because, you know, he was originally a couple years ago supposed to come to the Braves. Uh, 2020, I believe. Yeah, 2020. And then he got COVID. He, got test- he tested positive for COVID. And we never heard anything else about it. He didn't pass his physical, and the Braves moved on, you know, and it is what it is. I wouldn't have a problem with Puig. I would honestly rather go get Rosario. I think you could probably get Puig pretty cheap right now uh, because no one seems to be touching him, and that is what it is. Uh, I wouldn't mind it. I just I haven't seen him play in so long. I don't know where he's at. I don't know, you know, I have no reference of where he's at skill-wise. Um wouldn't be mad at it. Might be an interesting choice. Maybe you get him, and this is going to sound weird to you, but maybe you get him in a Pujols role, and you you know you, you treat him in that way off the bench, and just see you know maybe Pablo Sandoval be a better uh, better example where he's not washed up. I highly doubt he's washed up or anything, but you, you get him in that role and you see what happens. Right? None of us expected Pablo Sandoval to be anywhere near as popular. First of all. Or as you know, good in clutch situations as he was. Maybe you put you pick up Puig and you give him a bench spot. You let him have a pinch hit here and there, and and you just test the waters. Uh, that'd be the only way I'm bringing in Puig. I'm not bringing him in as a definite guy yet. Uh, although I will say that I know he's very popular because every video I did about Puig, you guys lit it up, and I appreciate that. Uh, I I hope he comes to the Braves purely for. Uh, my analytics, I hope he comes to the Braves. But for right now, I'm sticking with Rosario. Not to mention, and this has no, you know, meaning really other than, than you know, what happens, you know, how we look back at it. But it'd be nice to have some consistency from one year to the next, especially considering last year we had the World Series. You know, it, it would be nice because a lot of our team was gone. I mean, Ronald Acuna wasn't there. Mike Soroka, not there. Uh, you know, so... Uh, now if Freddie Freeman's not coming back, I mean, that's three major pieces that either weren't on that team or aren't going to be on the next one. I would like to see some consistency. I think bringing in at least one of those World Series heroes, and you know what I mean by heroes, guys that, you know, could not be shut down, and Rosario's a perfect example. You know, at least one of those guys would be nice just for for purely fans. I mean, just just... To be able to say, yeah, that, that's the guy that won us the World Series or won us the NLCS. You know, that would be nice. Uh, again, not um, not uh, necessarily uh, definite there, not necessarily mandatory, but it, again, would be nice for the fans. Um, Blake says, Olsen is a stud. If Freddie goes to the American League, we might have a win-win-win. Uh, maybe. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I... I like Olsen a lot. I've seen him play a good bit. Uh, you know, I, I look, I like Freddie a lot too. I really don't want Freddie gone. Uh, I, I know that I'm, I'm talking like this right now, uh, but I really don't want Freddie gone. I am, I've been a Braves fan my entire life. I do not want Freddie Freeman gone. Uh, you know, he's been around for a long time. 
He's one of those few players that makes a point to say he wants to stay. If he wants to stay, I think he's got to, you know, uh, frankly take the pay where it is and at this point if he wants to stay. Not saying that's how it should have gone down, but if he wants to be a Brave, he's got to take that pay cut at this point. Um, Bill Gates wants to know, do I know what the best offer was to Freddie? The last I heard, again, you're not going to hear the Braves front office talk, Bill. You're just not. Uh, but the last I heard was, I want to say, five-year 140 by the Braves. And then Freddie responded with six years 200. At this point, I wish we would have taken it, uh, taken it because I said as soon as I cut that video a few weeks ago, hey, guys, take it because it's only going to go up when we talk to the Dodgers and talk to the Yankees who got unlimited pocketbooks. Uh, and, and so far, that seems to be what has happened. Again, I'm in, I'm assuming because we don't know. We won't know for a long time, if ever. Uh, but that's what I think it is. I think we'll know what happened once we see the contract he signs, wherever it is to. Uh, because if he signs for $300 million, I got, you know, I don't blame Alex Anthopoulos at all. Uh, I, I don't want to pay him $300 million. I don't want to pay any player $300 million. It's just not how Alex Anthopoulos works, and I don't think it's really in our budget. And, and, I, and that makes sense to me. Um, but if it's $200 million, I'm going to have some questions. <laughs> but uh, we'll see what happens when we get there. Um, Strictly Losses asked, that hurt to see Shea go? Yeah, a, a lot of people... Have said that, uh, and, and I'm right there with you. I like Shea a lot. I kept my eye on Shea a lot, um, but you know, it is that that's why you have prospects, guys. You know, a lot of people really hone in on prospects and focus on prospects, and there there is something to be said for that. But a lot of times, you'll see those guys get traded for the betterment of the team uh, on the major league level. But you know, if it if it hurts to see Shea go, uh, just make sure to remember that we do have Darno still, and we got him for the next couple of years, and uh, we do have Manny Pena as well, and I think that would be a good catching core at least for this year, maybe next and beyond. But we'll see. Uh, and again, we do have William Contreras. Now I told you that William Contreras was going to be the trade piece. He still may be because we don't have an immediate need for a catcher, and a lot of other teams do. We have two guys. We have numerous catchers. I think we signed one from Georgia Tech the other day, other day that was like a local guy just for additional backup. Keep in mind, we went through like seven catchers last year, so I get why we got the depth, but we have a lot of catchers. A lot of other teams need a catcher. They need a good catcher. William Contreras, he struggles behind the plate right now, but he'll get better. He can hit. And I think at this point, if I had to bet, I think the Braves are counting on him to be in the future, but... Again, he might be thrown in a trade because it's not an immediate need. Uh, Alex Anthopoulos might decide that, hey, we're in striking distance of another World Series title, and we need something now. We need something big, and we're going to use William Contreras to go get it. Uh, that might be the case. Or maybe Manny Pena, whoever it may be. Uh, but it, it's going to be interesting. I knew a catcher was going to be traded. I was surprised to see it was Shea, though. I'll give you that. Uh, Billy, or I'm sorry, Bicky. Uh, got Olsen for nothing. Wouldn't say nothing. I uh, would not say nothing. I'm going to pull this back up. Uh, this trade is, is a lot of people are saying that we overpaid, uh, overpaid for this one. I don't necessarily think we overpaid because I think we're all aware of who's on this list more so than I think even a lot of the national media are because again, there's 30 teams guys. National media can't cover the Braves, you know, as well as the guys that sit here and think about it every day. Right. Matt Olson, great player. Pache, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to say I've lost faith in him. I think he might have a very good career, but the Braves have given him chances. There's no doubt about that. They have given him every chance to perform. And he's had good moments, but the consistency is just not there. The Braves need something now. Their, their, their window is now. Uh, Shea Langoliers could have been a very bright catcher for the Braves in the future. I think he'll have a very good career. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, Ryan Cusick down there uh, is a first-round draft pick. I don't know much about him because I haven't seen very much of him in the minors. Uh, he got he was first-round draft pick this year, but he is a good prospect. The A's won this trade it, from their point of view, I guarantee you. We won't know who won the trade fully for a few years, uh, but the A's probably think they won this trade. I saw a guy, an A's reporter, who was very excited about all these prospects because they're in a different you know, they're in a different mindset, right? 
We were in that mindset a few years ago where all we were focused on was prospects. Those prospects are in the major league level now. Austin Riley, Ronald Acuna, Ozzie Albies, Dansby Swanson. Those guys are up. They're in the core, right? We're not in that mindset anymore. The A's are constantly in that mindset. They rebuild and rebuild and rebuild, and I respect it. But that's how they are right now. That's what they need right now. They need young guys. Wouldn't say it's nothing. We might be able to say it's nothing in five years, but for right now, it's not nothing. Those guys are valuable, and we could have put those chips elsewhere if we had wanted to, but that's why you have prospects, to be able to deal those chips and be able to use them to better your team. Thanks for the comment, though. Bill Gates, the tears in Double A's eyes says Freddie's gone. I think so, too. Um, to be honest with you, when I heard Double A talk, that's when I was like, okay, yeah, I think we all need to you know, get under the impression that Freddie is more than likely gone. Uh, I, I've, I, to be honest with you, I've sort of mentally prepared myself for that, uh, over the weeks, uh, leading up to this, uh, that it might not happen because I thought it would happen a year ago. I thought it would happen two years ago. We would go ahead and just extend him, right? There's been so much talk about it for a long time. I figured it would just, you know, handle itself and it never truly did, at least not up until this point. Um, but I, I haven't seen anything as of, as of late, uh, to tell me that Freddie has signed with anybody. Uh, if you guys hear something, put it in the chat, but I'm checking Twitter as much as I can just to monitor anything, uh, coming out. But I, I think Freddie's more than likely gone. Uh, I will say that if he's not, I think we'll all rejoice, uh, and, and be happy. Uh, but again, nothing wrong with Matt Olson. There is nothing wrong with Matt Olson. Not one thing, uh, other than the fact that he's not Freddie Freeman. And, and that is what it is. Uh, John Kruger, Jock Jorge or Eddie? Eddie Rosario. And I, I've said it, you may not have been here, but I'll say it again, I don't mind. I love this subject because they're all so different and they all have so much, you know, they're just, they're different personalities, they're different hitters, they're different players. Jock brought all the energy. He had great moments on the field, but he brought a lot of the energy that was the team last year. You know the catchphrase, you know his mindset, you know the letter, all that he was great. I think he wants to get a paycheck and I think he wants to play every day. Jock's out of the picture. Jorge Soler, great player, great moment. He found a groove last year and he never got out of it. He hit a bomb in the World Series that, you know, is probably one of the best moments of the year, maybe the decade. Uh, but the guy that I'm going with is Eddie Rosario because up and down that postseason, up and down from his time with the Braves last year, he performed. And I think he is a guy that wants to perform now. I think he's a guy that, that wants to come in and win again. Not that they all don't. I'm sure they do. But I think Jock has his mindset on going wherever is going to pay him the most to play every day. And there's nothing wrong with that. And making that team as best it can once he gets there. Jorge Soler, I like Jorge. I really do. I think he's a great hitter. But he reminds me so much of Ronald Acuna. So much of Ronald Acuna. In terms of just, and that you're going to hear me out here, they're not the same statistically, but their style of play. Uh, he's not as good of a fielder as Ronald Acuna is either. Keep that in mind. But also, I don't want all power guys in the lineup. I want some guys that can get a base hit when necessary. Eddie did that whenever he needed to. His, I mean, the stats he had in those series, give me Eddie Rosario all day long. Um... Bicky says Pache can't hit MLB pitching. Well, he also hasn't seen that much of it. Uh, I, he's had his opportunities, but he also hasn't seen that much of it. Give him time. He may develop. You never know. Prospects, it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting thing, right? I mean, on paper, this, you know, just this theoretical player is supposed to be the best thing ever, right? Sometimes it just doesn't pan out that way. Pache might go another year in the minors and explode, right? You just never know. A lot of people thought Austin Riley couldn't hit MLB pitching after a month in the league. Just remember that. Uh, you got to give it time. You got to see how it pans out. Uh, I, I do think that, um, you know, we, we may look back on it and not regret it, but, you know, see see how those other players did and be like, wow, they could have been great for us too. Shea Langoliers is that guy I'm talking about and Pache. Uh, and, and Ryan Cusick for that matter. Any of those guys, really. I mean, honestly, like that trade, I mean – any of those guys could be great. I mean, they're all in the top 20 of the Braves farm system, for, or, or, of what used to be the Braves farm system. I mean, any of those guys could, in theory, 
you know, turn into being something crazy and, and being, being a very good player. So it, you just never know. Uh, but I appreciate the comment. Uh, Jorge Sapero, double A said they may make the move because they need to move on to other pieces. Braves. Oh, the, okay. I got you. Double A said they made the move because they need to move on to other pieces. Braves are one of the two finalists for Jorge Soler. I've seen that. Wouldn't be surprised if they got Jorge Soler. I don't mind them, uh, looking at it. I really don't. And I'm just going to throw this out there because I mentioned it a few weeks ago. If you remember, I threw out the idea that the Braves could trade Marcelo Zuna and dump that money and go sign Jorge Soler and Eddie Rosario. Maybe, maybe that's what they're looking at because I view Jorge Soler as a DH, uh, and I don't want Ozuna in the field. That that that's how I would that's how I would play it out. But I can't speak for what the Braves are doing. Um, but if they get Soler, I think he's your DH. I really do. I th I think you at that point. You got Freddie. Uh, you got Freddie off to another team. You got Olsen on first. You got Soler as your DH, and you hopefully either trade Ozuna or he's in the outfield. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, they're they're gonna get who they want. Uh, they're if they want Soler, I think they'll get him. Uh, but I, the, Soler's probably gonna get paid as well. Um, Blake has Jock officially come back. Uh, I saw he tweeted some stuff today. I'll check. I have not seen anything official saying he's come back other than like a bunch of crazy riddles and stuff where he's like, you know, I, I'm, he was hinting at Aspen, Colorado, uh, maybe the Rockies. I, I think that's where he was hinting. Um, but I, I haven't heard anything. Um, he did retweet. All right. All right. We'll, we'll play ball here for a second. He retweeted, uh, Braves gaining traction with Jock Peterson, been told it's for a one-year deal worth 10 to $12 million, and he retweeted it. So maybe they are tar targeting Jock Peterson. I think Jock is playing getting, playing mind games. That's what I think. Uh, but we'll see. If he, if he comes back, I'll be more than happy to take him back uh, because he is that guy. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to skip down a little bit here. Uh, Jorge, I don't think the, br oh, sorry guys, hang on. A lot of you guys are in here and I appreciate you coming in tonight. By the way, since we're in the middle of this, I'll just go ahead and take a pause. Like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton. A lot of you guys, I don't know you. I'd like to know you. I'd like to get to know you on this channel. I do these live streams throughout the season a good bit, usually on off nights uh, for the Braves. And we just talk baseball. I'd love to, for you to subscribe and follow me. It would, you know, obviously helps the channel, helps me. Thank you, and uh, of course, we're going to try to bring as much good content to you as as I can. Uh, you got a lot of you guys are in here tonight, and I God, I appreciate it. Uh, let me see. Um, wow, wow, a lot of you guys came in just a second ago. All right, Jorge says I don't think the Braves would sign Freddie to a long term deal and trade four top fourteen prospects for another great first baseman. It seems irrational. Great point. Great point. I completely agree. That's why I think everybody's sort of looking at it like all right, they're moving on. We need to move on, right? I think we've accepted that at this point. Um, if it did happen, I the only the only way I could see it happening at this point is Freddie being caught off guard, you know, after, you know, after all these negotiations and saying, no, I want to be a brave and then taking a pay cut. Uh, but that's the only way. I think it's irrational in, in any normal scenario. I, I think it's irrational. The I mean, Freddie's a little different because he's Freddie, but... At the same time, I agree with you, Jorge. I completely agree. I think it's irrational. I think Freddie is likely gone, unfortunately, but we'll see. Um, I, I can't speak for him, unfortunately. Ron Foster, it all boils down to money, always. The Braves just flat out didn't want to pay Freddie Freeman when he asked for a six-year worth 135. I want to say it was six years, uh, 140. I might have been mistaken there. A lot of numbers going on in my head right now, but whatever it is, it's $5 million difference. If the Braves didn't want to pay, I'm sure that, uh, that there's a reason. I don't believe he asked for six-year 135. I believe the Braves offered five-year 135. He wanted that sixth year, and I think that's where the, uh, the argument began. I uh, can't say that for sure because, again, it's a he said, she said thing at that point. You never really know, uh, but I believe that's where the, uh, you know, the disagreement was. 
Freddie wanted the sixth year, and he wanted more money on top of it. So I, I, I just don't think it really adds up, but uh, appreciate the comment. Hey, guys, I, I'm just going to be real with you. I have a ton of commenters tonight, and I appreciate it a lot. Uh, it, I'm going to try to get everybody, but just so you know, if you super chat, I'm more than likely I, I'll be sure to get to you. But that's the only way I can really guarantee you. I might have to skip around. If you have a question and I can't see it, I'm sorry. I'm going to do my best. Uh, but make sure if you got a question you really want me to answer, put it in a super chat. I'll get to it. You're, you're, you'll be first on the list at that point. Uh, thanks, guys. All right, moving on. Brandon Edwards, Grinky and Boyd. Uh, this is in reference to my starting pitching thing. You know, Zach Grinky. Zach Grinke's an interesting one, right? I mean, I, I think his personality itself is pretty interesting. Uh, I like Zach Grinke, to be honest with you. I think he's interesting. But I, to be honest with you, I think his his prime's behind him. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, with, with Grinke, it's like, if we bring him in, I don't think he's going to have the impact that some other guys would have had. Like, I, I don't think starting pitching is our necessary go-to. I think we want one starting pitcher. Uh, Matthew Boyd, uh, let me look at his stats real quick. Uh, Matthew Boyd may be a possibility. I don't think Grinky's your guy unless he's taking a pay cut, maybe can eat some innings. Uh, I know he's a good pitcher, don't get me wrong. I just don't think he's the guy. Uh, Matthew Boyd might be might be uh, our speed. Uh, now, he plays for Detroit. Detroit, the thing about Detroit, and I know he's on what a lot of people would assume is just a bad team, Detroit's going to be good in like two years, okay? They're, they're the Braves in 2016, okay? They, I think they might hint at a postseason. I think they might flirt with the postseason this year uh, I, I because they have a lot of prospects. they got a lot of guys down there. they still got to fight off the contract of Miguel Cabrera, and I get that, but they got a lot of guys there that could be good. Matthew Boyd's one of them. He had a good year last year, a 389 ERA, not a great win-loss record, not his fault. Uh, but again, a 3.89 ERA can't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at all if we got Matthew Boyd, honestly. But at the same time, you know, it, it's just not a guarantee. Uh, and again, I don't know if if the Tigers are going to want to trade him, especially if they're going to flirt with a postseason. That's where I think you know you might get a little bit of hesitance. I don't really know Grinky's contract status, uh, to tell you the truth. Also, uh, let me look at that as well uh, while while I'm sitting here on my phone. Uh, yeah, so he, yeah, last year, that, that's what I'm talking about. Grinky had a 4-1-6 ERA last year. He's got a great career, and he's a great pitcher uh, in his prime. Don't get me wrong. Odd guy, but he is a great pitcher. But he didn't have a great year last year. If you can get him cheap, he is a free agent. I mean, maybe you can get him cheap. Uh, he did carry the Astros a lot uh, last year without Verlander, and all. I get all that. I just don't know if he's in the Braves' best interest. Uh... You know, so again, his contract status, he is a free agent. Maybe if you get him cheap, that's the only way I see it. Matthew Boyd, I would lean more towards, obviously. Uh, but again, I don't know if either one of those guys are really who you go to. I, I don't know Boyd's contract status either, unfortunately. I didn't really get a chance to see that. He might be a free agent. If he is, then yeah, go for it. But if he's not, the Tigers, I don't think, are going to trade anybody. Uh, they're going to make a run for the postseason. Uh, Blake, Eddie as a lefty that's better defensively than Solaire gives us some flexibility that Jorge doesn't. Exactly. Uh, he is a better contact hitter as well. Uh, Bill Gates, Freddie is going to have to worry about $9 gas. Uh, hey, all right, come on now. Let's keep it clean, Bill. Uh, let's keep it clean. Let's not do that. Uh, yeah, so look, I mean, I know a lot of guys are mad about Freddie leaving. We don't know where he's going yet unless you guys do, and I just haven't seen it, but I've been really trying to uh, keep an eye on Twitter feeds. Uh, Brandon Edwards, hate losing Freeman, but an extra $20 million a year, by the way, to save. Uh, might be $200 million total, maybe more, probably more. Uh, yeah, and to be honest with you, I'd be interested to know what Alex Anthopoulos does with an extra $20 million. I, I really would. I mean, because look, he got Olsen with $12 million. Just think about that for a second, plus years of control, but... He got Olsen with $12 million a year. So that's Olsen. Let's see what he can do with 20 right? Uh, maybe add some more bullpen pieces, although I don't know how many we need. Uh, but it'll be interesting. Ron Foster says, Jorge Soler and Eddie Rosario are coming back to Atlanta for at least two years of playing ball at Truist Park. Ron Foster, I need to know the source. Give me the source. Drop a link. Let me know. I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe. 
Uh, Rosario would be the guy that I would pay two years. Solaire would be year to year. I, I just don't know if Solaire's consistency can hold up. Uh, that That's where I'm at with that. Trinity, I think the Braves are high on Michael Harris, and that's why they let Pache go. Probably made it a little easier. I'll give you that. Uh, to be honest with you, my, my thoughts on that, Michael Harris is turning a lot of heads. I have not seen him in person. I was supposed to go to spring training a couple weeks ago. We all know what happened to that. Uh, but he's turned a lot of heads. I've seen a lot of articles. I've seen some highlights. Uh, I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to be a great player. I'm interested to follow his career. I think uh, you're right. That might make, I, I don't know if that's why they specifically let Pache go. I think, you know, more existential crises uh, I think more existential circumstances uh, made that happen. Uh, you know, needs and wants made that happen. But yeah, I, I think it probably made it a little easier. Not to mention, outfield is not as specifically, you know, it doesn't have as many specific needs as an infield does, right? Like in the infield, first baseman's first baseman, third base, third base. Outfield, Ronald Acuna can play center field. He can play whatever position in the outfield, right? I, I don't think there's a as much of a challenge to cover that spot as there would be another. Uh, so yeah, I, I think Pache, yeah, he's a great center fielder, but there's a lot of good fielders, right? And, and I, we need somebody that can perform offensively as well. And Pache just didn't do that for the Braves. Maybe he turns a, you know, turns a notch in another, you know, in another organization for the A's. Maybe the American League helps him. Maybe hitting in Oakland might help him. And I don't mean that because he's going to hit a bunch of homers. I mean that because he's not. Maybe not try to hit the ball out all the time, and you know, uh, you know, just just line drives, base hits, and hit the ball the other way, and and just becoming a more complete hitter could help him. Uh, maybe we'll see. But obviously, it's a big get for the A's. I'm cer certainly in their mind, it's a big it's a big get for the A's. Uh, William Fulgham Harris. There was a no Harris was a no way trade. Period. Completely agree. I want to see this guy perform. I have not had the chance. Uh, there's a lot of talk in the chat now about him. I really want to see him perform, uh, either at the major league level one day or sooner. Uh, I mean, Michael Harris has been, I mean, he, he's been the biggest thing for a while. Like, I remember when he first came up, uh, like first got dropped, not came up. When he first got, like, mentioned at a spring training invitee or rookie ball, whatever it was, when I first heard of him, there was a lot of talk about him. Yeah, so 2021 minor league stats in 374 at bats. The dude hit 294, had seven homers. Uh, I know he's a good outfielder. I've heard that. I've seen highlights, but I, I wanted to go see this guy live. I, I want to see what he's got. And uh, hopefully we'll see him uh, you know, on the show one day. Uh, hopefully that'll be the case, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I don't think he, I, I think there's some untouchables. I think at one point Pache was untouchable. Drew Waters was untouchable. He might st he may still be. I don't know. I just think it's a lot easier to replace outfielders than it is to replace any other position. Keep that in mind. Uh, let me see. What more do you want from Freddie? He stayed through the rebuild. I agree. Um, I, I agree there. Uh, I said that. I did a video. I wish I could drop a link, but I did a video uh, a few weeks ago whenever the conversation first started being had you know, prior to the lockout being removed, you know, hey, uh, Freddie stayed through the rebuild. He's a guy that stayed with us for a long time, and he's a guy that uh, did not drop us when we were at our lowest. And by we, I, of course, mean the Braves. Uh, I'm surprised that they didn't fight more for him. Maybe they still are, guys. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, but I think at this point, I think we all know Freddie is more than likely gone, unfortunately. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I... I think, you know, when it comes to Freddie, Oren Griswold, I see down there kind of mentioned this. When it comes to Freddie, you do have to consider the fact that we have a lot of young players that are not getting paid very much right now. I believe, I want to say Austin Riley made 560 last year, five, uh, not million, thousand, five hundred sixty thousand dollars $560,000 last year, and that's nothing in the game of baseball. They are on rookie deals. And as much as I like Freddie, I like... Austin, the combination of Austin Riley, Dansby Swanson, Ozzy Albies, you know, I, Ronald Acuna, you know, I like the combination of all those guys a lot more than I like one player, no matter who that player is. And I would say that if it was Dansby as, as opposed to Freddie or even Acuna, I would say it for anybody. You know, one superstar does not make a team. 
and we, the Braves, have a lot to consider in the future. There are a lot of guys who are going to have to be paid. And as much as we have our favorites, and I get it, we have our favorites, there are a lot of guys that have to be paid, and that's the way baseball works. I get it. But if you want to be on a team that's going to win consistently and to be together, you know, you, you might not get paid the highest dollar. You might not get the longest contract. Uh, whatever the situation may be. Freddie had to do what's best for him if that's what he decides to do, if that's what ultimately happens, uh, likely will be. Um, but the Braves had to do what's best for them. And I think Oren Griswold has a good point where he says, rather than going shopping for free agents, let's start locking up some of our younger players long term. Uh, if that happens, who stands out as a candidate? You want to know who stands out as a candidate there, Oren? Uh, Austin Riley's my guy, man. I mean, he is. He's been my guy since he came up. Uh, I, I've been very impressed with him. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys didn't believe me early on, and I was defending him. A lot of you guys wanted him traded uh, while he, quote-unquote, still held value. Uh, I, I believed otherwise. You know, we had Donaldson at the time. It would have been really easy to re-sign Donaldson to a big-time contract for multiple years and we didn't do that. We kept we kept Riley, and we had faith in him, and we believed in him. And sure enough, uh, it panned out. I mean, the guy had an MVP caliber season, certainly an All Star caliber season. He should have been an All Star uh, if his name value was anywhere near Bryce Harper's. He would have been. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. I want Austin Riley long term. Maybe Dansby. Maybe Ozzy. I mean, Ozzy is locked up for the next five six years. Uh, but maybe Dansby at that point. Uh, but I'm going Riley, you know, and you don't have to agree with me. I'm sure you have your favorites, but that's the guy that I think is, you know, up and down this year. I mean, I, I spoke about Rosario's consistency. Austin Riley's consistency was all year long. And then it got to the postseason. He continued to do it. The pressure never got to him. He was consistent from opening day until game six of the World Series. There is no doubt about it in my mind. That's the guy. Jorge, again, Harris was the one prospect who the Braves probably said never going to happen. It was either him or Langoliers for Olsen. I think it was Langoliers or Contreras. I think the Braves more than likely offered Contreras, and the reason I say that uh, is because when when I did when I when I you know put together uh, trade uh, ideas when I when I put together you know ideas for trades where I, I thought they could happen. You know, I looked at what we had extra of, and I looked what other teams didn't have a lot of. A lot of teams didn't have catchers. So I started doing some research and some article reading, ESPN, 680 The Fan, whatever I could find. Uh, David O'Brien, who's really close to the Braves, a lot closer to the Braves than I am. David O'Brien came out, and I believe he said that they were grooming to trade a catcher, which is what I thought. And I wanted to see who he thought uh, it would be. And sure enough, it was Contreras. I like Contreras. I like Contreras a lot. I've met Contreras. Very nice guy. Uh, good player. Can hit. Uh, he needs to get better behind the plate. Maybe not focus so much on frame and focus more on blocking the ball. Uh, but at the end of the day, he is a good player. And uh, if nothing else, he's got the genetics. Uh, his brother, of course, uh, is Wilson uh, Contreras. And he's good. There's no doubt about it. He is very good. Um and I think he's going to be better in the future. But I thought that for sure he was the guy. If they traded a catcher, it was going to be Contreras. It is not. Uh, but the main reason I thought that a lot of a lot of the reason I thought that was because the timetable. Because when you look at it, when when you lay it out on paper, I can't unfortunately I don't have a graphic ready for you. But when you lay it out on paper and you do the timetable, you got Contreras and Manny Pena now two years, right? That's two years that William Contreras will likely not sniff the majors right? Unless one of them's hurt. That's it. Now, he might start killing it in the minors and overtake Manny Pena, but he's not touching Darno. So at that point, they, they both have, you know, they're both still with the Braves. Langoliers and Contreras are both still with the Braves. Now you have Darno and Manny Pena, and you got Langoliers and Contreras. One of them's got to play AAA, right? And the timetable, I, I just thought it left Contreras as the odd man out. And I wasn't the only one. A lot of Braves media thought the same thing uh and uh, it just didn't turn out i guarantee you that the braves offered pache Contreras, and that was the exact trade package i put together because i think they know how valuable langoliers is uh, a guy that is great behind the plate and can hit uh has quick hands through the zone has a quick pop time the quickest i think ever recorded uh i mean all that stuff we've heard but you know it 
whatever happened, it happened behind closed doors. We'll never know. I guarantee you the A's chose Langoliers. They made that a condition of the trade. You want our best first, you want the first baseman, probably the third best first baseman in the league, certainly in the conversation. You want him? Okay, well, we want the best catcher you got available, and we know who it is. Uh, so that is what it is. Uh, but I, Harris is going to be untouchable. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Lady Braves wants to go get Rosario. I appreciate that. Mab Mab, good to hear from you. I heard Freeman told Braves he would, quote unquote, make his decision in 24 hours, four days ago. Do you think the Braves got tired of waiting? Freeman may have been waiting for Olsen to get traded so Braves would pay more. Uh, I think he was certainly looking uh, for something to happen and, and test in the market. I don't think there's a doubt there. Uh, I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that he was testing the market. Uh, I don't know if he was purposefully, you know, let, let's see if I can, you know, stir it up. And I, I, I don't know if it's that, but make no mistake, he was, I mean, look, Freddie's got an agent. Freddie's got to get paid. His agent's got to get paid. I'm sure they were waiting on the right time to make a decision. I'm sure he also really wanted to come back to the Braves. So, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Um, Bill Gates, could Braden Shoemake be converted into a first baseman? Wow, you threw me a curveball. Uh, I think anybody can be converted into anything. I just don't know how good at, at it he'd be. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's certainly an idea. Uh, if I mean, he's not going to be on the Braves. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why not. Manic Savage, do you think there is a small chance Freddie could sign with the Braves as a DH? I think if Freddie comes back, it's going to be splitting time with Olsen at first and the other being the DH. But then you got to figure out where you're going to put Ozuna. And if they're in on Solaire, then you got to figure out where you're going to put Solaire. It's just a lot. I, at this point, I think it's unlikely to assume that the Braves have any interest. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure they have interest, but have any logical interest in, in bringing Freddie Freeman back because you have a lot of pieces. Unless they flip Olsen. They could trade Olsen and get you know their money back, you know, so to say. Um, but I, I think at this point, they've made their decision. Unless he's just on the phone calling and trying to make something happen with the Braves and backtracking on all the negotiations he's been in, I, I just don't see how it logically makes sense, unfortunately. I know a lot of you guys are holding out hope. Don't get me wrong, I'm still kind of holding out hope. I get it. Uh, but at this point, I think he's gone. Bill, uh, Rosario wasn't hitting in the Brewer series. I will say that. Well, yeah, how long was the Brewer series? Five games? How much did he tear up the NLCS, right? I mean, you're picking a small sample size. Eddie Rosario was not just good in the postseason. He was good once he came back uh, from being injured. When the Braves got him at the trade deadline, he was injured. Then he came back from injury, and he tore it up that whole – I think he hit for the cycle like a month before the season ended. He was killing it a lot of the year. It was just a postseason. He got all the credit for it. It's not a small sample size. Just the Brewer series is a small sample size. I'll also say, just for a second, the <laughs> – hang on a second. Hardly anybody was hitting in the Braves and Brewers series. I mean, that first game, it was like nothing, nothing uh, there for a while, right? I mean, Freddie Freeman broke it open uh, off Josh Hader at some point, but there, there wasn't a lot going on. Uh, the team batting average for the Braves, hang on, let me see. Yeah, so this is 2021. The team batting average was 234. Uh, Jock Peterson had a very good series. Austin Riley had a good series. Oh, and Eddie Rosario hit 308. I mean, he might not have had a lot of RBIs, but he was, he was getting base hits. I mean, he, he definitely performed. I mean, there's no doubt there. So even in the Brewer series, he was hitting 308. I, I'm not going to look up every series, but he did do well. Uh, it, it's just sometimes it's not as remembered. Uh, Brandon Edwards couldn't wait on him any longer. More teams and options at first base. Teams had to uh, sign Freeman or trade for Olsen. I agree. I completely agree. I, at this point, like... You don't want to be, you know, you got to protect yourself if you're Alex Anthopoulos, you know. Um, you got to watch out for the organization because at the end of the day, that's his job. That's what he gets paid to do. Uh, yeah, there you go. I see you, Ron. I got you. Oren Griswold, got to have some balance in the lineup. You get that with Rosario. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, completely agree. Um, <laughs> Pablo won a lot of games hitting off the bench. He certainly did. 
Um, Dylan Walden, here we go. I think the Braves were tired of waiting, and instead of being left with nothing, they traded for Olsen. Plus, clearly they are fine with Acuna being the face of the franchise. Oh, for sure. I mean, Acuna has definitely become the face of the franchise. Freddie, I think, uh, more so was the leader. You know, if you really want to dig into that, I think he was more so the leader. Acuna is the face. I mean, Acuna's the guy's on. You know, he's the guy on all the T-shirts. He's, you know, all, all that stuff. I mean, he's the guy the kids know. You know, all, all that. But Freddie was the leader. I just, you know, there there is no better example than Freddie Freeman. Uh, without a doubt, there is no better example than Freddie. Uh, and I, I hope his legacy continues in Atlanta. To be honest with you, even if he's gone, I hope that his number's retired one day. Uh, I, I think it makes it significant, significantly harder for it to be. Uh, but I would like to see the number five up there. I really would. But we'll see. You know, it, it's it, I, it's just going to be a hard thing to replace. And, you know, I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. I've been on this thing for a while. But I'm going to say this again. Do not make... Uh, do, do not make, do not make Matt Olson the replacement for Freddie Freeman. Matt Olson is his own man and he is more than talented enough to be a star for the Braves. Make no mistake about it. I mean, this is a guy uh, who has been killing it for the A's for, for, I mean, for the past three or four years, I've heard all about his glove. I've heard all of, I mean. Dude's killing it. Just don't make him the replacement for Freddie. Make him his own man. Do not think of him as the replacement. He didn't get traded for Freddie. He's not coming in directly to fill that gap. He's coming in to play first base for the Atlanta Braves, not to replace Freddie Freeman. Keep that in mind. Uh, Moises Perez. I hope I got that right. Rosario is the guy to go or Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Schwarber. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've heard that name a time or two. I, I think Rosario is probably still my go-to there, just because I think you, you have that relationship built in. You got good memories with him. Probably a little easier to convince. Probably a little less price-wise. I think Rosario is probably still your guy. Megan Halquist, Jocktober. We should sign Jock Peterson. Uh, well, based on his Twitter, that might be the case for ten or twelve million, but we'll see. Uh, they're certainly uh, hitting him up. Um. Mab Mab, Tyler still need hitters for the outfield in DH. Do you well, you guys asked this question a bunch, but I, I kind of answered this already, but I'm gonna read it. Tyler, Braves still need hitters for the outfield and DH. Do you think Freeman could still sign and move Olsen to outfield and DH? People say he could go to Toronto even though the Jays have Vlad. Why not Atlanta, even though we have Olsen? Um Yeah, um, I don't know if Olsen can play the outfield. I'm not really sure on that. I think at that point, one of them would be DH, and you'd see Marcelo Zuna uh, be outfield, or you would see Ozuna be traded. I, I think that's how it would go, because depending, uh, Acuna says he's going to be ready for opening day. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he's probably going to have to wait a couple weeks. You're going to need a short-term uh, fill-in for Ronald Acuna, right? So that's that's two outfielders, one temporary, one permanent. I went through this in the crowded outfield video, but I'm going to go through it with you again. You need a temporary and you need a permanent. I say the temporary would probably either be a minor leaguer or Guillermo Heredia. Not permanent, temporary. Guillermo Heredia, maybe two weeks in the outfield. Maybe center. Keep in mind, he played center a little bit in the postseason last year when we won the World Series, so don't get up in arms. Uh, in terms of permanent, you could have Ozuna out there. I would prefer, obviously, you got Acuna and Duvall. But you could have Ozuna out there if you brought in Freeman uh, to be DH or split time with Olsen, whatever the situation may be. Uh, you, you could have Ozuna out there or you could trade him. That's how I see it going. That's the only way I see Freddie, you know, coming back. That, that's it. I, I, you know, and if you can get, if you could convince Matt Olsen to be permanent DH, even though he's a two-time gold glover, you know, do that. But I, I think it's going to be hard to get either one of those guys off of the bag. You know, so that that's going to be a problem. Um, but th there's, I just don't know, guys. I think at this point, unless you see a, a major shift and, in, in, you know, a, a major shift here, I just don't see it happening. Uh, I really don't. Dylan Walden, Freddie leaving is like Chipper leaving. I agree with you. I, I, I agree with you. I get where you're going with that. He, he, he symbolizes what Chipper once symbolized. They're not the same player. Uh, and again, Chipper is a rarity. 
I mean, he is an absolute rarity. They don't do it anymore. Him, Jeter, you know, Cal Ripken, whoever you want to mention that stayed in, in a uniform his whole career, they just don't do it anymore. And I, and I went through the list, and I know a lot of people are, you know, especially younger fans, this is like unheard of. But keep in mind, Smoltz played for other teams. Glavin, other teams. Hank Aaron went back to Milwaukee. Phil Necro played with the Yankees, plus some other teams. Greg Maddox started with the Cubs, then came to the Braves, and then didn't even retire as a Brave. He went to the Padres. Dale Murphy went to the Phillies, and he went to the Rockies. Andrew Jones, you know, he went to the Yankees at one point. You know, they they all, you know, as, as heartbreaking as it is, if it, this is your favorite player or a guy you grew up watching, you know, or, or even if it's just, you know, a guy you kind of liked, whatever it is, I know it's a hard thing to, you know, wrap your head around that he's not going to be there anymore. I get it. But at the same time, this is not something that doesn't happen. This is something that happens all the time. I think the reason this is the most disappointing is because of who it is and what he said. He said that he wants to come back. He's, you know, we've we've gotten to know his family in a lot of ways, right? Uh, and that kind of thing. We we've grown to know him. I mean, we've seen him since he started in the league and even before that in the minors. So I get it's hard. I I I get it. Um, but like Clay Melton said, Freddie was supposed to give a decision this past weekend. He didn't. Ol- Olsen had interest from four teams. Double A had to make a had to make a move or risk losing both. And I agree, Clay Melton. Thank you. I uh, hope you're subscribed. I know you're kind of new here, uh, but I appreciate you commenting. I, I truly do. So thank you for that. Uh, Bill Gates, once again, Rosario with his short swing with just flicking balls to all fields in the playoffs, bring back Rosario. That's what I'm talking about, that kind of player. It, it's just not common anymore. And when you have somebody like that in your lineup, things happen. Maybe you win the NLCS, right? I mean, the, things happen. And, I mean, look, the walk-off he had where, uh, was it Corey Seager that missed it up the middle in the NLCS? That I mean, uh, very few guys hit it on the ground anymore. You know, I mean, very few guys can hit for the cycle. Uh, you know, he almost hit for the cycle in the postseason. Instead, he just hit two homers instead of hitting a single or whatever it was. I mean, this is a guy that I think could be great for a full 162. Solaire is great in short bursts. He has great spurts, right? Jock Peterson, great energy, great, you know, great player, plays the game the right way has the right mindset, all of that. Rosario is a guy that I think could be great for 162. And that's why if we're going to bring any of those guys back, I want it to be Rosario. Mab Mab says, if Olsen were a free agent, he would get a lot more money than Freddie Freeman on the market right now. True. Uh, The Braves got the better player. He is five years younger than Freeman. That's important. You also got team control. You got lesser costs. He's only getting $12 this year. That's projected. But he's only getting $12 million this year. That's a lot less than whatever Freddie's going to be getting. Completely understand. Plus, it's not as big of a commitment. And the Braves are, you know, they're they're the team that can go any year. You know, any any year they can they can win a World Series. And that's the mindset Alex Anthopoulos. He's said that before, guys. Alex Anthopoulos has said multiple times that the mindset he holds is not let's go win a World Series this year. It's let's set ourselves up a little bit every year put ourselves in the postseason. Because if you get to the postseason, if last year showed us anything, if you get to the postseason, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And last year, I don't think we were the best team in Major League Baseball, just to be flat out honest with you. But we were the last one standing, right? And it was because we set ourselves up for potential success. Potential success every year can lead to either five, you know, pretty good years or two or three great years where you have a World Series run, right? Like you just, you never know once you get into that postseason. Uh, but I, I appreciate the comment. Oh, geez. Brandon Kirkwood. Oh, man, you're throwing out a big name. What about Nick Castellanos or Kyle Schwarber along, along with Eddie? Uh, Eddie would be nice, but the thing about it is, I feel like it, if Kyle Schwarber comes, he's your DH, right? You got to think he's your DH. If Castellanos or Eddie comes, I think you only get one of them. Because Castellanos, no way Castellanos is even sniffing the bench, much less sitting on it. And I don't think Eddie sits the bench. I don't think he's a bench player anymore. I think he was for the Braves for that short stretch, but he's proven himself. I don't think he starts on the bench on any team this year. If he's picked up, he's picked up to be a player. Uh, In terms of Castellanos or Eddie, 
Um, I mean, I love Castellanos, and you know that it came out. CC Sabathia. I don't know how many of you guys said it, or saw this, but CC Sabathia came out and said that uh, a big reason why, if not the reason why, uh, Derek Jeter had problems in Miami was because he wanted Castellanos. I mean, Castellanos is a guy that, again, once Freeman's over with, once this, you know, <laughs> just marathon of a, of a contract dealing is over with, Castellanos is going to be one of those guys that falls off. Uh, he's going to be one of those guys that, you know, finally gets signed. Him, uh, Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, all those guys are going to be knocked down because Freeman's going to set the price. And with Castellanos, it's... He's a great player, but I, I don't think you get both. I, I, there's no reason because, again, you already have Duvall coming back on an arbitration deal, right? He hasn't been set yet, but he is coming back. Acuna, definitely coming back. He's only going to be gone a little while. So that leaves one spot. And because we're moving to American League rules with the DH, you don't have as fluid of a bench. You have guys that can rotate in and out and get, maybe give a guy a day off you know, or, or have a pinch hit every now and then just to do it, but – it's not as, as strategic and as fluid as a National League ruling would be. Uh, so, unfortunately, I just don't see a route where you can get Nick Castellanos. I don't see a route you can get all three. I don't even see a route you can get both Nick Castellanos and Eddie. I think you might be able to get Nick Castellanos and Schwarber, or maybe Schwarber and Eddie. I just don't see how you can get both. Uh, but I may be wrong there. I just don't see how you can do it. Uh, Clay Melton. I heard five years, $185 million was offered by the Braves. Clay, I'm going to be honest with you. I've heard so many different numbers when it comes to Freddie. I, I've heard five years, 185. I've heard five years, 140. Six years, what, whatever. You know, like, I've heard a lot. I, there's nothing confirmed uh, except Freddie. I think, I think that was confirmed. I think Freddie's, you know, offer of six year, 200 was confirmed. But in between that, uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't give you a confirmation there. Um, I, I just haven't seen any, any major source tell me without a shadow of a doubt that I, any of those, uh, were, were done. Um, it, I wish I could though. Dylan Walden. I don't think Olsen would have gotten more than Freeman in an open market. I think you're wrong. And the reason I think you're wrong, I love Freddie. I truly love Freddie. But if Olsen was a free agent right now, he is five years younger. He's got a lot of upside to him. Uh, and, and frankly, just the youth. I mean, Look at Tatis. Look at the money that dude's knocking down right now. $30 million, right, a year. Purely because they think he's going to be a great player, a lifetime player. He, look, I'm not saying he's not going to be. I think he's a great player. But he is young, and he's not the only one. Wander Franco just got a huge extension because, you know, they think he's going to be a lifelong player. They want him to be on, on the team for a long time because he's going to be a great player, and they want to go ahead and just knock it out, right? They want to lock him in in Tampa. That's great and wonderful. But again, these guys have youth, and that's something Freddie Freeman doesn't really have. You know, Freddie is still in the prime of his career, can offer a team a lot, but he's not going to be a guy that's going to be performing to the level, uh, you know, that he has been performing for the next 10 years. It's just not going to happen. Uh, there's no way that you can convince me of that. You know, unless your name is Barry Bonds, it doesn't happen. Um, you know, but we'll see. Uh, Freddie Freeman is a great player. He's a great player. I think he'd be great for the Braves for the next six years. But if the Braves don't want to commit to it, I'm sure there's a reason. I, I'd have to look at it. I thought about this earlier, uh, doing a timetable of when Austin Riley's deal is up, Dansby's is up, you know, and just putting a graphic together to show you. Uh, but I didn't have time. I was trying to get on here before you know nine o'clock. Uh, but I got on here when I did. Uh, but anyway, I I think there's probably some reasoning in terms of money where they can't afford or they can't guarantee that they can afford Freddie for six years. There, there's got to be something there where they just don't feel like they can do it. Um, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, Jorge, I, I see that. Um, I guess the future at catching is Contreras then. Uh, it's, it's not as easy as that. You know, I, I wish I could say it was. I, I just don't think it's as easy to say, yep, the future is this guy, right? Because the future may be on another team right now, right? Like, I remember, uh, if you've been a fan for a long time, you'll remember the name Christian Bethencourt. I remember that he was going to be the next big catcher for years. He was gone within, like, two years, okay? And he just didn't pan out. You never know who's going to pan out. 
And it, it's not a knock on that guy. It's not a knock on Contreras. We just never know. Uh, I'm sure that's what the Braves are thinking right now is that's who they got to develop. That's who they got to get ready for the show. But, you know, it, we don't know, right? The future may be Manny Pena. Who knows, right? I mean, the, we got so many catchers right now that I, I think Darno has a few good years left in him. You know, he, he's, he hasn't asked for any, you know, contract that's been inconceivable. You know, if, if he continues to do that, I don't see a problem in, in bringing back Darno. He's, he's performed. He's been great. Uh, he's fit in well with the club. The pitchers seem to do well with him behind the plate. I would love to have Darno back. Uh, but if it is Contreras, great. Uh, like Bicky says down there, Contreras may never make it. Uh, but at some point, uh, yeah, Langoliers or Contreras was definitely going to be traded. Clay Melton, the Braves have been okay starting low ceiling catchers. Um, yeah, uh, they've been okay, but I mean, don't you always want to improve? I mean, don't you don't you want to get better? I I don't think Darno's a low ceiling catcher. Uh, we, the reason we had low ceiling catchers last year, and you can call them low ceiling, whatever you want to call it, but Stephen Vogt, you know, uh, who else? I mean, we had so many last year that just came up and were gone. Kevin Smith, Jonathan Lucroy. Uh, you know, that's three right there, not even including Darno and you know everybody. Uh, you can call them low ceiling, but I, I think a lot of it is, you know, ultimately we have priorities in other departments, right? Like we, we have priorities in the infield. Look how good the infield was last year. We have priorities in what free agents we need to get at the trade deadline. If, if we're speaking purely on last year, what priorities we have? The infield, the pitching, the bullpen, which we did do something with the bullpen at trade deadline. We got Richard Rodriguez. But then we got outfielders. We got Eddie Rosario. We got Jorge Soler. We got Jock Peterson. We had a huge trade deadline. Ketchik was the least of the concern because at the end of the day, we knew we had at least Darno coming back. You know, and Contreras is, is just fine in terms of filling in, right? But we improved it when the market was right. When the market made sense to go get a catcher, we went and got Manny Pena. Manny Pena is a great number two. He ain't a number one, but he is a number two. Darno is your definite number one. Uh, Blake, I appreciate that, buddy. I really do. Uh, national media doesn't need to cover the Braves when we have you. I really appreciate that. Tell your friends. <laughs> uh, Mad Bab, I heard Shea will just end up similar to Tyler Flowers. Oh. I also heard Pache will never hit. Do you think that's true? Pache never hit in the minors, and Shea profiles similar to Flowers. Flowers was overrated. Uh, a lot of people like Flowers. I wasn't big on it, but Flowers was old. I mean, he was going to have a comeback last year when we needed a catcher, and he his back hurt. I mean, like, it, 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 he was old. When he came to the Braves, he was old. To be honest with you, when it came down to him or Kurt Suzuki, I wanted us to keep Kurt Suzuki. I thought that made more sense. I still think that makes more sense. You never know what's going on behind closed doors. Kurt Suzuki also made less money. <laughs> so I, I, it all made sense to me that we would keep Kurt Suzuki, and it didn't happen. I, I think it's... You know, it's too easy to say that Shea's going to end up similar to Tyler Flowers because a lot of people early on in Austin Riley's development said that he was going to be the next Troy Gloss. I didn't see it. I think he's more of a contact hitter. I think he's more of a, uh, you know, just a complete hitter. Uh, he's got the power of Troy Gloss. Uh, I mean, he can hit it, but Troy Gloss, Chipper Jones said this one time, Troy Gloss said that he his mindset was 40 good swings a year. I don't think Austin Riley's that, right? Tyler Flowers may or may not focus, you know, as much on hitting or catching. You, you, it's too hard to compare players like that, right? A lot of people compare Freddie Freeman and Chipper Jones. They're two very different players. They, you know, they just play for the same team. That's the literally it. They're very different players. They're very different personalities. And I, I think it's too hard to compare those. You know, saying that Pache will never hit, I think, is ignorant. Uh, because, again, the guy is young. I'm not saying he will. I don't know. I can't, I'm not a time traveler, but, you know, saying that he's not going to hit is, is just ignorant. A lot of people said Austin Riley wasn't going to hit. I'm going to go back to that. They said that Andrew Jones at one point wasn't going to hit. He was just a fielder. And then he proceeded to hit, what, 400 homers, 500 homers, whatever it was. I mean, the dude's probably going to be in the Hall of Fame. And at one point, people were saying he couldn't hit. You just never know, right? That, that's what I'll leave you with there. Clay. Uh, if the Braves extend Olsen now for four years, they'll have a core for years to come. I agree with you. I agree with you, but I think the same would have been said if they had extended if they had extended Freddie. Um, maybe they maybe they view their window as longer. You know, maybe they you know maybe they don't. Maybe they think their window is the next two or three years, and they're going to let Olsen have his contract 
up and then they're going to attack the free agent market again because that seems to be the strategy of Alex Anthopoulos. It's not, you know, it's not just making, you know, spur of the moment decisions. It's we're, we're going to get, <laughs> we had an old motto at my old work, the bestest for the mostest for the leastest, right? You get the best you can do, the most you can get for the least amount of money. That's how my old work operated. Maybe that's how they think. You know, maybe, maybe they, they attack when the market is right. That's why they went and got a catcher in the offseason as opposed to the trade deadline because they probably would have given up a similar trade to what we did today with Matt Olson. You know, you just, you, you never know, right? There's never been a deal that I've looked at, especially trade deals, that I've looked at and been like, why are we doing this? This doesn't make sense at all, right? There's never been a deal under Alex Anthopoulos that just didn't make sense to me. I'll, I'll do one further. Even as far back before Alex Anthopoulos, you know, into the olden times when we were giving up Craig Kimbrell and and the Uptons and and Evan Gaddis and all I mean everybody that we had pretty much and we went into the rebuild years it made sense right we're going to compete in seven or eight years we want to compete then forget about now but we're going to compete in seven or eight years we had a goal in mind every decision that's been made under Alex Anthopoulos there is a goal in mind when it comes to Matt Olson, I, I do think it was to fill the gap of Freeman, even though I said he's not the replacement because he's not. But I definitely think it was to fill the gap of Freeman. Um, and on top of that, I, I, I think it's to, you know, for one, I mean, look, the guy's good. I mean, again, I mean, the guy hit 39 homers last year. He's a lefty bat. He makes sense. If you're going to fill a Freeman spot, this is the guy you want to do it with, right? And I'm not just saying it. This is... Definitely the guy you want to do it with in the majors today. Lefty first baseman and can hit for power. I mean, I that's and, and on top of that, go Glover, right? Like, I mean, th th there is no bad decision that it's been made here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they could extend, you know, for years to come and, and have a core. I think they already have a core. To tell you the truth, I think they had the best. I mean, they I think they had the best infield in baseball last year. Uh, show me one that was better. You know, you're going to be, pickings are going to be slim, right? Uh, Jorge says doing this trade now is better than if Freddie left and then we tried to trade for Olsen. The A's would have had more leverage and demanding more top prospects. Completely agree. Uh, we did it when the timing was right. We gave Freddie chances. I have no problem with how this went down. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out for the Braves and for Freddie Freeman. H. Rosser. It's Matt Lana time. I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, Matt Olsen. Guys, it's late. I'm sorry. Uh, Good to see you. I hope you'll subscribe. Uh, Dylan Walden, is Ozuna going to play? Oh, yes, he's going to play. Uh, he, he will definitely play. Uh, we are paying him way too much money for him to sit on the bench. Uh, he is going to play. I know the domestic dispute and all that. You know, there's a lot of questions there. Uh, but Ozuna will play. Um, he I, There's a lot of questions of where that's going to be because of how many faces we had last year that came in and took over his job. Uh, but we're paying him, I think we got him for the next three years, $54 million, I want to say, locked up, uh, 64 total, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that's about where it's at. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's going to be it. Um, so Lara's coming back. Uh, if you got a source, let me know. I need that to be confirmed, but I haven't gotten anything. Um, Jorge needs to come back. Yeah, I agree with that. Um Rosser, except he's twice the size. Charles says, he says to bring back Eddie. Jorge says, would it make sense bringing back Rosario and Soler with Drew Waters and Michael Harris? Uh, I mean, I think it depends on how long, right? Like, and how much do you believe in Drew Waters? Right, because Michael Harris has got a while. He's great. He's great in the minors. But he's still got a while, right? Like, I, I looked him up a minute ago. I could look up his stats again and see where he's at. But he, he, I believe, has a while. Drew Waters is on the cusp of coming to the majors, right? Or it's make or break time for Drew Waters. Now, COVID shut him down a little while, and I get that. But at this point, I think I think we're looking at, all right, when, when is this guy coming up? Pache's came up. Uh, his estimated time of arrival is this year, right? I mean, you got to think at some point he's coming. Um, he is the number one prospect as of now. Uh, so we'll see. Michael Harris... Uh, his estimated time of arrival is next year. So if you can get, you know, if, if you can get one of those guys on a short-term deal, I could see it. But uh, yeah, I mean, 
Rosario makes sense to me. Solaire doesn't so much, uh, but I get what you're saying. Not to mention, you never know, Michael Harris might have a setback in the minors. You, you never know. But he is an estimated time of arrival is pretty is next year. Uh, but that doesn't also that doesn't mean that he's going to be playing every day. That that could mean that he, his debut is next year, right? Pache came up and sporadically made appearances in the major leagues, right? Like uh, Drew Waters' is estimated time of arrival has shifted numerous times because of COVID and different things. So it you know we'll see. Um, yeah, Dylan says it perfectly. He doesn't think Drew or Harris are ready. They won't be for a while. I don't think Drew is ready either. I've seen him play. Uh, I have looked at his stats. I don't think he's got consistent enough stats to be called up to the majors on a permanent basis yet. Uh, would the Braves consider signing Grinky? I'm sure they consider signing a lot of folks. Uh, with Grinky, I looked up his ERA a few minutes ago. Uh, I just don't see it. Not unless you want just a back of the rotation guy. I mean, I think he's past his prime. You know, I like Grinky, um, but, but I don't know. Um, the Braves are trying to win the World Series now. Olsen was a must. Uh, that's a different opinion. He's going to destroy the chop house this season. Should be fun. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have some some shots for sure. I mean, his swing and the way that park is built, I mean, he's definitely going to have some shots at the chop house, without a doubt. He's a great player. I don't know if he's a must. I, I, I would have been fine with either with Freddie or uh, Olsen. But the other part of this that I haven't even really thought about until he said this, uh, to be honest with you, you know, in, in terms of... Uh, I'm looking up something, guys. I promise I'm doing I'm doing something beneficial for you guys. But in, in terms of the the Freeman deal, you know, if if Alex Antopoulos is putting out feelers for the these teams and he knows what he's got to deal with 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 you know Olson and the A's, it's like okay, well that's something I can put down. This is what they want, right? Okay, and I can I can I can do this. I can complete this trade. Okay, Freeman's not giving me a definite answer. It's like well I I can't. I can't do it. I, I got to give my attention to them. And I'm sure that, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to skip down just for a second. Uh, Blake, this is what it says right here. It's a retweet by Jock Peterson. I found it pretty interesting. Hopefully you can see it, but it says per source, uh, the Braves are gaining traction for Jock Peterson, uh, being told it's for one year with a worth of 10 to 12 million. He retweeted it. You can see it at the top up there. Uh, but yeah, pretty interesting. Um, you know, Holly Baylor tweeted that earlier. So we'll see. Um, that was six hours ago. So we'll see. Uh, skipping back up, Mad Mav. Braves just saved a lot of money by not signing Freeman. Why sign Rosario? Go sign Castellanos or Schwarber or Suzuki or Bryant with that extra money. Rosario wasn't consistent with other consistent with other teams. Small sample size for Braves. I agree with that. I, I, I will give you that. It is a small sample size in the grand scheme of his career. But my perspective is if we're going to get one of those guys, if we're going to go get a guy like that was that was on the team last year that made a difference, Solaire, Jock, Eddie, whoever it is, right, that, that is a free agent. The guy I want is Rosario. Uh, that's my perspective there. Now, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, you can spend money. You can go get Castellano, Schwarber, Suzuki, Bryant with that extra money. But I think out of all those guys, give me Castellanos uh, at this point uh, and, and give me a four-year deal, uh, maybe longer. Um, but, yeah, I I, mm, I don't know. I, I think, you know, Alex Atopoulos has, has an idea of what his budget looks like. I unfortunately do not. Uh, but I, I think you're saving money there, but... At the same time, don't you want to use that money maybe later down the road for a trade deadline or or something like that? Maybe you want to use it and see what the need is a little bit into the season. That seems to be Alex Anthopoulos' way of doing things. Uh, so we'll see. Um, let me see. Chapman, DH, Platoon with Freddie at first. It would be nice, Paul. It would be nice, Paul. I, I don't know, though. Like, it, could it happen? Maybe. Um but we'll see. I I would love for it to happen. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I would love for it to happen. I just don't know the reality. Uh, what's up, Jonathan? How you doing, buddy? Uh, thank you, Blake. Uh, yeah, one more reminder. Since you guys have been hanging out with me for a while, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, that I would appreciate it. Uh, of course, it helps me. Uh, all that good stuff. Go ahead and just put that out there into the world. And tell your friends. Send them a link to the channel. I got a lot of good content. I got interviews with uh, former Braves, current Braves, all that stuff on the channel you can find. I got all kinds of Braves content. I put out uh, content that is current 
I try to be as current as I can. A lot of times I'll do these live streams and just sit and talk baseball for a couple hours. Uh, I don't know how much longer I'll be on tonight, so get your questions in. But yeah, please do me a favor. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Thanks again, Blake. Appreciate it. Joseph, what's going on, man? Uh, good to hear from you. Blake, oh, you were hired as an usher. Oh, man, I got to stare at you all game. I'm just kidding. Yeah, good. I'll, I'll sure I'll see you. I don't know when I'll be there. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of trips that I have planned this year. I got to be in a wedding later this year. But I do plan on being at the Brave Stadium at some point, probably a good bit. You'll see me there. If you ever see me at the stadium, I promise I'm not threatening. I'm like five foot four. Come take a picture with me, say hello. I always appreciate that. Uh, and I always appreciate you guys watching as well. Clay Belton, the options were to sign Freddie and lose Rosario, Peterson, and Solaire, or sign Olsen and have money to sign two or three of those guys. I get it. But at the same time, I think given the chance, the Braves would have done it. Uh, I, I do. I, I think the Braves still would have signed Freddie. Uh, I might be wrong, but that that's the uh, based on the news that I'm reading out there. That that's what I'm seeing. That that's what I'm gathering. Charles Pruitt, is there a chance that Mike Soroka will be back this season? I think there's less of a chance that he wouldn't. I think there's there's a high chance that he's back. I think he's going to be back within a couple of months uh, of the season. I'm looking. I, I think. His hope, he did an uh, interview the other day. Maybe I can find it. He did an interview the other day where he, he spoke about his recovery. Um, I might be able to find it quick. Hang on. I can just quote him. Um, I'm not seeing it. But he did an interview where he basically uh, talked about it. He goes, he, he hoped to be back by July. That, that's the crux of it. Um, I think I saw it on Facebook. Anyway, it's not on Google, so I can't find it. But, uh, yeah, so I think he's going to be back. I think he is at least going to be back for the postseason, and that, that's the most important part. Uh, but uh, your rotation would look like more than likely Freed. Morton, who's already back, by the way, he's already throwing, so that's a good sign. But Freed, Morton, uh, Anderson, and at that point, you know, you, you're kind of left there, you know, with, with, with competition. You got Kyle Muller, you got Tucker Davidson, you got Mike Soroka maybe coming back. We don't know yet uh, at some point. But yeah, June or July last I heard Clay Melton got me. See you there. Uh, Joseph says, hope I'm well. Oh, we got the Spanish question mark. Do you think the Braves are going uh, too much by analytics? I mean, six years, Greedy will be... Freddy, oh, Greedy. Uh, Freddy will be 37. Uh, no, uh... I think that I don't even know if it's analytics. I think it's more so got to do with payroll. I don't think they they're expecting a major decline at 37. But even if they were, you, you can't blame them for going by the analytics, right? I mean, I, I'm not a big analytics guy. Um, but you look at Miguel Cabrera, right? Miguel Cabrera, Albert Pujols, any of those guys, uh, they had a major drop off. You know, once they hit a certain age. Uh, I'm gonna pull up Miguel Cabrera's stats, see if I can find the exact age where there was just like an absolute drop off. Uh, so, yeah, Miguel Cabrera right now. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, yeah. So he he debuted in 2003. So he's he's about he's nearing 40. Uh, he's he's up there. Uh, yeah, he had a major drop off right around thirty five, right around you know. So, I, I, I just don't know that the Braves want to commit to somebody for for that long when they have all of this potential that's younger than him already in the minors. That that's already in their you know in, in their realm, right? They don't want to be having to pay somebody who's not performing. And I'm not to say that Freddie couldn't do it. I'm not saying it, uh, but I think had he done a four or five year deal. I don't think they would have cut him off and be like, "Yep, retire, go to another team." I think it would have been okay. Let let's re let's reevaluate. You know, let let let's reevaluate and see. You know, what would make sense for us to pay you? Um, you know, what 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 makes sense? You know, for the Braves right now under your con current state of performance, you know, in four or five years, I could see that. I don't blame them for that. Uh, I I wish they had discussed it more. I wish that that had been flushed out a little bit more if it wasn't, but. Who knows? Uh, I, I don't think it's an analytics thing, though. I really think it's payroll. Uh, and when you're under a company like Liberty Media, all due respect to them, when you're, when you're under a company like that, you know, you're under a budget. And it just is what it is. And 
it's nobody's fault. It's nobody, at least it's nobody's fault that we know of, but it's, it's nobody's fault. It just didn't happen. What up, Tyler from DB Cooper? Man, man, I, I have a I have a cast of characters that follow me, don't I? DB Cooper, what up, Tyler? Freddie would have cost twenty five million or more. So now we got to go spend the twenty five million in other ways. Sign a top pitcher can never have enough pitching. I like where your head's at, uh, but I'm gonna say that uh, somebody earlier, sorry, somebody earlier mentioned locking up younger players as well. So I, I think there's a lot of things we can do with it. Uh, I don't think it's going to go into anything but bettering the team. So there is that. Uh, as much as I like Freddie, I, I understand it. I, I, I true, I, I get it. Like, I get both sides. I get Freddie wants the biggest check he can get because it's probably the last big check he'll get. And then uh, I get the Braves as well. So, you know, it, I, I understand. Um, Cole Bond, that's a new name. I don't know. If you are new, please subscribe. Uh, good to hear from you. Also like the channel. Thank you. Uh, off topic. You're making me go off topic. How dare you? I'm just kidding. Uh, but I'm coaching the Western Branch Braves in Babe Ruth League this year, and it would be cool to show the kids a shout out. Love the channel, bud. Keep it going. I have fans. I have Little League fans. Well, uh, Western Branch Braves in Babe Ruth League this year. Uh, make sure you compete this year. Here's your shout out from Tyler Redmond and On Deck. Uh, Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. And you guys go out there and win a championship. Uh, kill it. Uh, uh, I love kids, obviously, and uh, I love Little League Baseball. So go out there and uh, show them what's up. I appreciate the comment there, Cole. If there's anything else I can do for you, uh, my contact, I think, is on my About page. I got my email there. So if you need it, you can do it there. I might uh, be able to do something better for you. Uh, Jay Becker, again, a name that I don't know. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And, of course, like the channel. Uh, Rosario is the perfect fit to sign left fielder lefty and can get on base ahead of Olsen and Riley in the two hole. We need to give the lineup some balance. Yeah. Look, I love Acuna in the leadoff spot just as much as anybody. Okay. Like those, they have had great moments, you know, with that. And I understand that, you know, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of leadoff homers. I'd love if he broke the, the record for that one day. Don't get me wrong, but Eddie Rosario in that, in the two hole or the leadoff spot, you know, whatever, wherever. I don't care. I don't care if he's in the nine hole. Just wherever. We don't have a hole in the lineup anymore. There is no pitcher spot. Put him somewhere. The guy is good. He can get on base. And if you put him in front of guys like Olsen and Riley and Acuna and whoever else, Ozzy, runs will be scored. He's also fast. He can slide. I mean, does anybody remember the slide in the postseason? I remember the slide. So just remember that. I, I, th I think, you know, ultimately – Rosario's the guy I want. Out, out of the free agency class that was the Braves, I want Rosario. I can't overstate that. Uh, a lot of people keep asking me. A lot. Of, I'm not mad, but a lot of people keep asking me, who do you want? Uh, you know, Rosario. Give me Rosario. Alex Anthopoulos, I want Rosario. That's it. All right, Mad Mad. Braves offered five years, $140 million. Yep, that's what I remember. Freeman wanted six years, two hundred. Big difference. They should he should have taken the one forty. I wish they had just met in the middle, some kind of way. Uh, I didn't think two hundred was was that big. Um, not to say that it's not a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I get it. Um, but I, I didn't think it was astronomical compared to what. And this is a big jump, but Mike Trout compared to what uh, Bryce Harper is making. Uh, granted it's up there, but it's not as a long-term commitment. Uh, it's not, it's not a career contract per se. Uh, I, I didn't think it was terrible. I thought had they done six years, 170, that would have been good. Uh, or six years, 180 even. I thought that would have been good. I, I just wish it had been more of a meet in the middle type thing. Um, although at this point I wish the Braves had just taken the six years, 200, because now I think you got Freeman ticked off. You got, the Dodgers involved, you got the Blue Jays involved, you got the Yankees involved. At one point, you had the Rangers involved. That price is shot up. I guarantee you it's shot up. Uh, so it is. Uh, and it's too. And as much as I love Freddie, it's too much for Freddie. Uh, Bill Gates, could Braden Shoemake... Didn't you already ask this? Could Braden Shoemake be converted into a first baseman if, if Osa leaves as a free agent? Well, we got a few years before that. Let me look up. Braden Shoemake uh, defensive stats and stuff. Uh, I, I, oh, uh, mm. I don't know. I think he's a shortstop, you know, and, and I think at some point, mm, mm -mm. I, I think at some point we're going to have to decide whether or not we want to keep Dansby. 
and it'll probably be after next season because Dansby's contract is up after next year. Uh, that's something that a lot of people don't uh, think about uh, or, or really talk about, but those contracts are coming up. I've told you that before. Dansby's is up after next year, and at that point, I think we're going to value, okay, do we really need to give Dansby a big contract or do we just want to give Braden Shoemaker a chance, right? I, personally, I'd rather you just keep with Dansby. I think Dansby is a suitable shortstop. He's not the best in the league, but he is a great shortstop defensively. Uh, he rarely has a has a monumental error. He has little things here and there, but it's rarely big. Uh, he, I mean, the guy's a hometown kid. And, and Braden Shoemaker, I actually think, is a hometown kid too, but Dansby's established. And it, I, I want there to be some consistency. And to be honest with you, as opposed to Freddie, I think Dansby really might give you a hometown discount and stay here. His family's here. Uh, his his fiance is here uh, competing a, a, in Atlanta, I believe. So I, I think he wants to be here, not to mention he's made such a big deal about, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, be, being in Atlanta. You know, he, he's made a big deal about the community uh, and all that. I, I think Braden Shoemake very well might be a trade piece. Uh, let me look up Braden Shoemake's stats since we're, I'm going to be on here a while, it looks like. Uh, I don't have anywhere to go, though, so I'm more than happy to do it. Yeah, so he's from Texas. He's from the South, but he's not a he's not a Georgia boy. Uh, yeah, so his his stats last year: three hundred twenty four bats, he had a two twenty eight bat average, twelve homers, and a two seventy one on base. I need that on base to be up, and I need more hits, right? I don't necessarily need homers, but I need more hits out of my shortstop, right? I, I don't know that he's and I'm I'm looking at a very uh, generic stat sheet. I'm not looking at anything in depth. I don't know what league he's in. I don't know if it's double A AA or triple A. I don't know how ready he is. Uh, but at that point, I would rather you just use them as a trade piece. And w- look, we got a long time before we need to analyze first base. Uh, it's either Freeman or it's Olson. Right now, it's Olson. Uh, if we re-sign Freeman, we'll reanalyze that. Uh, but for right now, I mean, I don't want to throw any anybody else into that mix. If, if you get what I'm saying. Um, but I appreciate the question. Uh, it's a good question. Charles Pruitt. Okay, thanks, Clay. Uh, Boyd is a free agent. Okay, appreciate that, guys. I can't keep up with everything, so I appreciate you guys doing some research for me. Matthew Boyd is injured and won't pitch most of next season. See, there you go. That would be a signing for later down the line. He probably won't even help next season at all. Boyd, are you referring to this season, I hope? Boyd would be a signing for 2023 after surgery, yeah. Yeah, I I, I think Grinky and Boyd are kind of just out there. Uh... Ijack FFS, that's a name I don't know as well. Uh, hope you subscribe. The latest on Mike Soroka. I'll come back to you, Joseph. The latest on Mike Soroka. Uh, I, I said a second ago, but last I heard, he's hoping to be ready by July. That's his hope. Granted, Acuna wants to be ready by opening day, and we still don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, we'll see, though. Um, Joseph says, I don't think it is too much to pay for Freeman. He is the face of the franchise and his body of work. Also, his presence at the clubhouse cannot be measured. Look, I agree with you. I was the guy defending defending his offer. I, I thought six year two hundred was fine. Uh, I just don't know what it is now. Um, but the the thing about it, yes, he's the face of the franchise. Yes, he also took a pay cut back in the day, and he stayed through the rebuild. So he's he probably feels like he deserves a, a big raise, right? And he probably and he does. He deserves a big raise, whether it's by the Braves, whether it's by somebody else. He de- he deserves a big raise. Um, I just don't know if it's in the Braves' best interest because the Braves have a choice. And if if Freddie's flirting with other teams, you can't blame the Braves for pulling the trigger. You just can't. Kevin Crispin. I hope I'm saying your name right, buddy. Uh, if I'm not, you know, correct me. Uh, Zach Greinke would have been more appealing before the NL went to the DH. That man could pitch and hit. Yeah, I, I said the other day, I had a line the other day I thought was pretty good. I said, uh... I said, you know, I think everybody's okay with the DH going away or, or coming moving into both leagues, except for like Max Fried and Madison Bumgarner. You can add Zach Greinke to that list. Uh, they they would be upset about it. I, I was hoping one day we would see a Max Fried home run or a grand slam or something cool like that. We did see a walk off before it was taken away though. Uh, Max Fried is also probably going to be the last uh, uh, silver slugger hitting pitcher. Uh, so you know that's kind of cool. Uh, in the National League, or yeah, I guess, yeah, total, <laughs> it'll be the only one. Uh, do you think the Mets loaded up influence? Oh, okay. 
Do you think the way the Mets loaded up influenced the trade a little faster than Double A was anticipating? Um, I don't think Double A is affected by stuff like that. At, at least he doesn't seem to be. He very well may be behind closed doors, but he's very good at covering up emotion. In turn, like today was different, obviously with Freddie leaving, but he's very good at covering up emotion uh, in terms of like you know, feeling like he's rushed or feeling like he, he has to make a decision, right? He, he's very good about that. I, I think Olsen made sense. Uh, it, it, it is something that makes sense. If you take all emotion out of it, if you take Freddie Freeman out of the conversation, it makes sense. And, and that is the best thing I can say about it. Uh, that is, you know, ultimately he made the right decision here. If Freddie's not giving you a definite answer, you have to make that decision as general manager. He made that decision. You can't blame him for that. Uh, I, I thought it was, you know, the right decision. Uh, in terms of the Mets loading up, uh, Mets are the biggest threat in the National League, without a doubt. They are the biggest threat in the National League, and I don't think there's any doubt there. Um, but, you know, they loaded up last year. We were all worried about it last year, and then they tanked halfway through the season. It's just, it's easy to see, you know, somebody, see a team do all this, and, and then they become the Mets, or they become the Phillies. Um, by the way, breaking, uh, thank you to William Fogan for tweeting me this, I appreciate it. Breaking, Blue Jays and Kyle Schwarber are nearing an agreement on a deal in the three-year $60 million range, more to come. Uh, now, that's not confirmed, we don't know, uh, but I'll say it here just to, just to throw it out there, that is rumor. Uh, but it is three years, sixty million. Um, it, it very well might be fake, though. So just hear me out. That that's a rumor. We we don't know for sure. Um, I got somebody tweeting me right now, uh, David and Dessa. If you're watching, I will just answer you here. Uh, Tyler, what is your gut feeling of where Freddie Freeman will sign? Oh man, my gut my gut feeling until three o'clock this afternoon was uh was the Braves. Um, but it's tough, man. You know, uh, the Blue Jays is interesting because he is Canadian. Uh, that's interesting to me. L.A. was interesting because he's got a house out there, so that was interesting. Uh, the the Rangers was interesting just because of how much they've upgraded. I don't know, man. It, it's it's tough. Uh, I, I'm gonna answer you back. On Twitter later, I promise. But right now, I can't. Um, if you're watching, um, but yeah, I I don't know. I wish I did, but I don't know. The I, I really think it's kind of up in the air. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick L.A., which makes me sick. Uh, to tell you the truth, it, it truly makes me sick. The, the I saw the lineup uh, of L.A. and. Uh, I saw the lineup with with of L.A. with Freddie Freeman in it, and it it doesn't look right. You know, it, it just doesn't. And I I hope that's not where he goes. Um, but it, it's tough, man. It, it it's he's got a house out there. He lives out there. He's from out there. He grew up out there. You know, all all signs would point out there. Money's out there. I I, I don't know where else it would be, unless the Toronto Blue Jays just really want him and. You know, he wouldn't be the only first baseman for the Braves, you know, in history to play for the Toronto Blue Jays. Fred McGriff went out there as well. So it's interesting. Um, Stoops, uh, see you, man. Uh, Stoops says, who, what do you think Freeman, oh, I'm sorry. What do you think of Freeman being a DH? I think Freddie's too talented at first. Don't get me wrong, he can be a DH. I, I, I just think, you know, ultimately that Freddie, if, if he's going to play, he's going to be a first baseman. Um, yeah, Michael K apparently has said twice on his radio show this hour that he's hearing Freddie Freeman to Toronto. I uh, don't know how true that is. Thank you again, William. I appreciate it. I, I mean, that's where uh, the, the Toronto's got to make a good move though. Like they, they have to make that step. You know, they have to put money out there. They got to speak with their money. They can't just throw it out there and hope for the best. Right. I, if he goes to Toronto, he's, he's got, it's got to be a lot of money. I, I don't see somebody, granted he's got dual citizenship, so I don't know, but I don't see somebody moving from Atlanta, Georgia to Toronto uh, or even L.A. to Toronto very easily. I mean, I, I just don't. Not not in terms of 
what they wanted to do. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really don't. Uh, I am going to have to end this pretty soon, uh, so get your questions in. Uh, I have to go to bed at some point, <laughs> but it's been a great show so far. Make sure, again, you like and subscribe. I do appreciate it. It's been a great night so far. Um, Chipper Jones said, Michael Harris is the left-handed Acuna. Wow. Let me tell you something. I trust Chipper Jones' opinion when it comes to players. Uh, I really, really do. Um, because he he was... He was who I listened to when he talked about Austin Riley. Uh, he talked about Austin Riley. You know, he, he compared him to Troy Gloss, but he said he's going to be a more complete player, all that. Uh, and he said he's going to be with the Braves for a long time. I believed it. I saw what he was talking about. I knew the changes that had to be made, and I saw it happen. And he changed. And I saw him developing. I saw the development. And if you just take time with players, you can see that. I haven't seen Michael Harris in person, but if Chipper Jones says he's the left-handed Acuna, I have full faith that that's what it's going to be. Uh, or at least the potentials there, right? Uh, William Fulgham, Harris reminds me of Ron Gant. Ron Gant's a 30 for 30 man. You know, that, that's entertaining. Uh, Dylan Walden, the message is clear. The Braves feel confident enough to make Acuna the fans to the franchise. Yep. Uh, I doubt there will be any more players playing for one team. Freeman had the last chance. Uh, I mean, there. I think it could happen. Um, I don't know. The... I, I think it could. There, there, there are certainly uh, instances where it could. I think Tatis could be uh, because he's got such a long contract that they, they may cover up most of his prime, and then he might just take a you know a hometown discount. He might just want the biggest contract out there. Who knows? Uh, I think there are players like that who have gotten a long term contract. You know, uh, Bryce Harper got a long term contract. It can happen. If I mean Mike Trout's going to be a one uniform player. Uh, he might be the last one, but there there are players out there that have the potential. Freddie just wanted to so much, and I, I hate that it's likely not going to happen now. Ross Franson, out of the players that got that we got at the trade deadline, which ones would you want to stay, and do you think some of them and trade Ozuna instead? Ross, I threw that theory out about a month ago now, and I said that if we were to trade Ozuna and get prospects back, right, because our prospects. Our, our prospect uh, ranking has fallen to, like, number 17th. It might be even lower now um, because, uh, excuse me, it might be lower now because of how much we traded today. The, I don't know. The Basically, I would say that I, I want Rosario. That, that I've said that numerous times. Uh, I, I think if you traded the Zuna for prospects, you sign Soler Rosario, Soler be your DH, Eddie be your outfielder, and then you got... Eddie Rosario, Adam Duvall, and Ronald Acuna in the outfield, and you got Ozuna at DH. That's what I would, or I'm sorry, Soler at DH and Ozuna traded. That's what I would like to see. And I'll be honest with you, Ozuna's a ready-made DH. He, he's ready to go as DH. I would not be mad if Ozuna was the DH, if I'm completely honest with you. I know a lot of people would be. I, I would not be. Uh, I, I just wouldn't. It wouldn't personally bother me if Ozuna was the DH. At this point, I think that's likely what's going to happen. Uh, but again, Alex Anthopoulos has done wilder things, so we'll see. Um, Wilmer Chinchilla back again. Uh, Cunha has been the face since he came up. I think he's been the face since the grand slam against the Dodgers in like 2018. I was there for that. That was different. That was a different feeling that we haven't had in Atlanta prior to that in a long time. And I, I think that put him on the map. I think Freddie carried us through the rebuild and served his purpose. Uh, and I would have liked to have seen him continue to do that with the Braves, but uh, Acuna became the face that night. I, I firmly think so. And don't get me wrong, he had a great year prior to that, but that was the night where I was like, this guy's going to be great. And so far he has been. Um, Michael Harris played in some of the Braves' COVID games versus the Marlins in 2020. Tyler, he hit. Tyler has a hit in both games. Uh, yeah, I remember that, uh, but it, it's vague. You know, I, I haven't seen him, like, for an extended period of time. I'd like to see him, you know, like, to be honest with you, I was looking forward to spring training so I could watch him uh, in person and, you know, live stream games or whatever. Uh, I've seen him hit. I've seen highlights. I've seen little things, but not anything in depth. Uh, Dylan Walden. Acuna wasn't the face until Freeman left. Acuna was the future. Uh, I don't know. Acuna's, Acuna won Rookie of the Year. 
And I mean, he he was he's had some pretty good years. I don't know. He I think he's the present now for sure. Uh, Pete Draper. So many prospects never reach their potential. I think it this was a shrewd deal by Double A. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, I don't. I be honest with you, I don't know what shrewd means exactly. Uh, I don't have my glossary on me, but uh, I would say that you know, yeah, you're right. So many prospects don't reach their reach their potential. I think Pache is in danger of doing that. Unfortunately, um, it, it is what it is. I. I I I think at this point you the Braves see their window. They see it's in the next five years. They're they're trying to get to that window, and I don't blame them. Uh, you know, there's guys. If you're on Twitter, there is a ton of tweets out there about this Freddie Freeman stuff, and the 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 uh, you know, Jock Peterson's basically retweeting uh, rumors about himself. So that's pretty funny. Um, reports are out. You know, um, that Braves have offered a lucrative offer to Solaire. Um, don't know how true that is. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there. So once the stream is over there, there's other outlets that you can go to, uh, to, to find out information. Twitter is what I use primarily cause I'm subscribed to like everybody or I'm following everybody. Um, there, there's a ton of stuff and you know, we're, we're going to see, I think the Braves got to do something to raise morale, uh, similar to what they did when they got Jock Peterson. Um, but, you know, I, I personally, I, I think they got to do something. Uh, I wouldn't be mad at a Freddie Freeman DH, though. I would not be mad at that at all. Would not mind waking up to that news. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to entertain that, Chinchilla. Not going to do it. Um, I've seen that comment already. I think most of these guys are just repeats. So, look, we will have a... Uh, oh, wow. More of you guys came in. We'll, we will have uh, more. Okay, I'm gonna replay. I, you can watch the replay. I promise. But I feel like I've answered a lot of these questions already. A lot of you guys just came in, uh, and I'm getting all kinds of spam now for some reason. Uh, but don't worry. Uh, we're gonna get rid of that. Uh, I promise. Uh, if anybody, if any of my moderators are out there, please deal with that. Uh, wow, a lot of you guys came in, and it did not update till just now. Uh, a lot of you guys are here. Welcome. Uh, wow, I'm gonna be, I, there is no way I'm going to be able to get all you guys. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's no way I'm going to do this. So I'm going to wrap it up for the night. Uh, I do appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, that's going to do it, because I there's literally a ton of you guys, and I am nowhere near answering all of this. Oh my goodness. You guys have killed it tonight and I do appreciate it. Look. Um Yeah, I can't answer all these. There's like like no joke, like 200 comments just popped up. There's no way I can do it. Uh Oh my goodness, gracious. Uh yeah, so I'm going to wrap it up. I do appreciate it. Uh make sure you like the video. If you like the content, which a lot of you seem to tonight, subscribe to the channel. I promise I do pre-recorded stuff all the time. I do live streams a good bit, and I try to talk to you as much as I can. Super chats are the way to my heart, okay? They are the way to get to me directly. Uh, they're the way that I can respond to you directly when I have nights like this where, you know, the comments take over and I just can't get to all of them. Uh, this That's the best way to reach me in times like this. So if you got something, I'll give you another two or three minutes uh, to put something in. Uh, in a super chat, but after that, I'm going to have to wrap it, guys. There's just there's too many here, and I'm going to have to do that. So, uh, guys, again, I'll give you one last little recap of what I said earlier. Um, uh, no, Mad Map, no. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Uh, here, uh, let, let's give a recap of what I said earlier. Maybe that'll answer all your questions. Uh, obviously, the Matt Olson uh, trade was today. Very big deal. Uh, Matt Olson for Christian Pache, Shea Langoliers, Ryan Cusick, and Joey Estes. And obviously, very big deal. Again, uh, you know, it, it's... My, Mad Mab, you're killing me, man. You're, you're absolutely killing me. All right, all right, all right. I'll answer your questions, but then I, I got to go. I got to figure out where I left off. Uh, there's so many of you guys. You guys are... I love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> a lot of... Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's let's just... Let's, 
Let's start. Let's let's start. We're gonna start way up here. Mad Mab, starting with you, buddy. Tyler, I agree with the timetable. I thought Contreras was gone, but the A's must have pushed for Shea. Both Shea and Contreras have to be starters at AAA next year, so one of them has to go for more value. Ross Franson, I get you have to get paid, but to lose your soul is not an option for me. Ross, don't take it so personal. This is a business. I said this earlier. You know, it, it's it's a business, and it's unfortunate that that's the case. I hate that that's the case. Uh you know, that, that it happens that way, but it, it's today's age and it's not going to change. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, and it, it's just going to be what it's going to be. You know, I love Freddie Freeman as much as the next guy. And I, I don't think he's selling his soul here. I, I think this is a negotiation tactic that went wrong. Uh, if I'm honest with you and I hate that it did, uh, I truly hate that it did. Uh, but th there's nothing we can really do anything about it. You know, there's nothing I can really do about it now. Um, all right, I'm going to start from the bottom. So the newest ones are going to get my attention just so I can keep up with you guys. Joe Reese, do you think Solaire and Peterson will return to the Braves? My honest opinion, my honest opinion is 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 no on Peterson. Uh, is, is yes on Solaire at this point, based on what we know. Based on what we know, I'm saying yes on Solaire. I wouldn't have said that... Uh, I would not have said that, you know, a week ago. But based on what we know now, where folks are, uh, where where folks are basically getting in and, and saying that there's a lot of interest in Solaire, uh, I'm thinking that, that that's that's sure. Um, so we'll we'll see. Uh, but that's what I'm thinking. Uh, do you think LA has? Oh, whoa. Um, I'm not. I can't answer that uh, honestly. Um, when do you, when, okay, when do we have to pay Riley and what can you expect from his future production? I think a lot of what you saw this year, I think it's either going to have an uptick or it's going to stay consistent. Either way, I am fine with it. I'm going to look up Austin Riley's timetable. I want to say it's like five years, uh, before we, before he's a free agent. Uh, but we're at some point he's going to hit Arbiter. Yeah. He's a free agent in 2026. So four years. So it would have been five last year. Uh, he's arbitration eligible this year, though, so he will be making more money. To be honest with you, I would like to go ahead and just lock him up, but we'll see. But I expect consistency. Mad Man, Tyler says, Tyler Freeman says he tries to have a 900 OPS because that's what elite players do. Freeman didn't do that last year. Olsen did, 900 plus. <laughs> he's the better player right now. I mean, that that's very arbitrary. I, I can't say that. I can't say that Olsen is just a better player. I mean, look. I'm gonna pull up this graphic again. They're they're very even. Uh, Olsen's more of a power guy. Um, I, I just don't, you know. Look, Fred, Freddie's been consistent. I, I don't think it's you don't have to drag one down to make one look better, right? Um, the A's received too much for that trade. Braves have to pay for the price of being cheap. It's not the Braves. It's Liberty Media. They put the budget on. That's how it goes. You know, there, there's nothing that we can really do about that. Um, it, it just is what it is. Uh, Mad Mab. Tyler, I agree. Catchers are great, but they don't win it all for you. Who is the last team to win a World Series on the back of an expensive catcher? Phillies and Royals have good catchers and lose. Pitchers and hitters win. Catchers aren't always good hitters. Right? Phillies got a good catcher in JT Real Muto, right? Royals, of course, have Salvi. But... Uh, there, there's been some good catchers over the years. Buster Posey's a pretty good catcher, and I think he's got three World Series, doesn't he? Catchers make a difference, and they make a di more of a difference than you think. Uh, a lot of a lot of good catchers help pitchers, and you know Brian McCann, I think, was very good at that. I think Brian McCann would be a good pitching coach uh, because of how much he was able to help pitchers. So that's just my thought. Uh, when are we going to see Harris? Uh, Romeo, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate it. You're going to see Harris. Uh, his estimated time of arrival is 2023. I think it might be a little after that, uh, but we'll see. I think it depends on who we got at the major league level and all that stuff. Oh, we got a super chat. They get my attention. I have to do it. I am so sorry to skip you guys. I'll try to come back. Uh, Ron, this is from Francisco Othon. I, if I didn't say your name right, I am so sorry. Ron Washington helped mold Matt Olson while he was coaching in Oakland. Wash is going to love working with him again. Chop on Braves country. Great point. I didn't know that. I didn't even think about it. Well, I might have known it, but I didn't think about it. Great point. Uh, you know, I, I think Ron Washington, you know, 
Ron Washington could be a manager on any team, I think, personally. Uh, and I think he's a great – I think he could be a managerial candidate, and he has been a managerial candidate for years. Ron Washington, I, I'm i going to tell you guys a story, and this is going to interrupt the chat. I'm sorry. I'll try. I'll, I'll try to be quick. I went to an Andrew Jones autograph signing four years ago probably, uh, and it was at a Walmart in uh, Marietta somewhere. You may have been there. If you were there, you should have said hello. Uh, That's before before I did all this. Uh, but anyway, I didn't went to it, and I think I got a helmet up there signed or something. And Ron Washington walks in, okay? And he's not a part of the signing. He's just shopping at Walmart, okay? And he's got 500 Braves fans lined up to get Andrew Jones' autograph. And only a few of us recognized him. I saw him, and my dad was with me, so he stayed in line, and I went and followed, you know, because I'm a stalker, I guess. Um, but anyway, I followed him, and I, I walked up to him, and I had a conversation with him. I said, hey, you know, do you mind if I get a picture with you? I wish I could show you, but I can't. Uh, it, it's out there on the Twitterverse somewhere. I'm sure you can find it. Uh, but he got a picture with me, and he goes, uh, oh, "Why?" it was like me and like five other people. And he's like, are there? Are y'all just Braves fans? What are y'all doing? Because we were decked out in Braves gear. I was like, well, no. Um, there's an autograph sign here today. I said, you didn't know about it? He goes, no, he goes. Uh, I said. He goes. Who is it? I said. Andrew Jones. He goes. Oh my goodness. I I get. I got to get out of here because he knew he was gonna, he was going to be raided by about five hundred fans, uh, and it, he would have been. Uh, but he snuck out the back door, and he told me thank you for telling him. <laughs> I just thought he'd like to hear that. Yeah, I like I like Ron Washington a lot. Very always been very nice to me every time I've met him. Um. Oh, show enough. A lot of names in here, guys, that I am not familiar with. Uh, I'm just not. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, Framore, that's a friendly. I've seen you before. Uh, good to see you. If I don't know you, please subscribe. I do these a lot. Um, it, it's been a great night tonight. I did not expect to go this long. I thought I'd be going an hour. We're now two hours and 14 minutes in, uh, so it's obviously been a good night. I'm going to do my best to get this uh, going in. Uh, rant, show enough. Okay, y'all are having a separate conversation. Okay. Uh, Randy Minton, do you think Contreras is better uh, is a better keep at catcher than Shea? Sorry, it's been a long day. Uh, I, no, I don't. Uh, I, I, I really think the A's fought for Shea. I think Contreras is a great hitter. I don't think he's got it down on catching yet. Uh, hopefully that'll change. But for right now, I think Shea's the better one in terms of potential level. But Contreras is more than suitable. I think they fought for Shea. And considering that they gave us Matt Olson, I mean, I'm not mad at it, right? Like, I, I, I get it. They, they deserve to have an opinion on who they get. Frey Morg, if Atlanta were to sign Freeman, where do we put him? How would that work? Sorry if you already answered that. Got here late and <laughs> like the rest of the mob, LOL. Yeah, a lot of you guys got here late. I'm going to do my favorite. Um, I, I'm going to do my best to answer everything. Uh, but this is like my favorite thing to do. I just, y'all mob me uh, all of a sudden. Uh, if we were to sign Freeman, I, I think you're going to go, I think you're going to see him as split in time with Olsen as DH. Unless, unless you see him, uh, unless you see the Braves flip Olsen, which I don't see that happening. I just, I don't think there's, you know, I, I don't think that would make sense for them to do, if I'm honest with you. Uh, if I'm just completely honest with you, I don't think that makes sense. Um, but that that's the only way I could see that working. Unless they split time at first and half the H half first, I, I don't see how else it works. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's, you know, really likely. I, I don't. Mab Mab, Dansby is way better than Shoemake will ever be. Wow. Wow. Coming out with the, with the facts. I don't understand why uh, Shoemake is so highly regarded. He looks the part, he talks the talk at the plate, he never walks the walk. Uh, based on the stats, I'd have to agree with you on that. Uh, not going to turn that down. Uh, Shoemake, never know. They might pop off. You just never know. But Shoemake, as of right now, I'm picking Dansby. Ozuna has something to prove this year, MVP year. I'll believe it when I see it, uh, but I wouldn't deny it. I, I think he definitely is going to want to come out and show that he's worth having. Um, I, I, de I, I definitely think he wants to show you know, that he, he belongs in the major leagues. Uh, and not the Dominican League. He won the Dominican League MVP, though, so you never know. Uh, RLP, the real chosen one. Which two would you prefer? Jock and Jorge, Jock and Rosario, Rosario and Jorge to finish out free agency. I really like Jock. Like, and I don't mean as a player. 
I just really like him. I think he's a great person to have on a team, right? With that said, on paper, I'd go Rosario Jorge up here, and in here, I'm going Jock Rosario. Uh, Richard Davis, uh, please subscribe, by the way, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. You guys are killing me tonight. Just beat me up with comments. Uh, if the Braves still sign Freeman, he plays first. Olsen has played the outfield. Has he played the outfield? See, I'm not familiar with Olsen, so forgive me. Uh, I, I'm truly, I, I'm not. I, I've seen him play. I, I know his game. I've seen highlights, you know, but they're on, they're on the complete other side of the country and they're playing. I'm asleep. You know, like it, it's hard for me to see guys like that. I know he's great. Don't get me wrong. I watch him. I just don't, I, I don't know everything about him, but if he's played the outfield and he's good at it, I'm okay with that. That would be awesome. Uh, Rick Prada, what's going on, man? Good to hear from you. Mad Mad, Freddie Freeman is not Canadian. He does have dual citizenship, but he was born in America and lived his entire life in America. By my count, that makes Freddie Freeman American. He is American, but he does have Canadian roots. My mistake. Luke, the Braves fan. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, Richard Davis, Ozuna will have an MVP this year, maybe. All right, Bambi. I mean, Freddie is 32 years old and getting up there in age, but I mean, I am sad he is gone, but not really because he's being selfish and not the Braves being a not giving the Braves a discount, and Matt Olson will be great. That's one way to look at it. I don't think it's being selfish. I mean, you got to think. He's got a wife and kids to think about, you know. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, it's just business. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, RLP, we are not going four hours. I go to work at like 2 a.m., so <laughs> we are not going four hours. Uh, I'm going to go as long as I can, but two hours is 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 is, is Tough. I'm going to try to finish these out and then probably probably have to tune out, unfortunately. Uh, if you guys get me to like 2,000 views, that's probably it. Ben Ballier. Freddie is the better player. If you argue that, you're flat wrong. And you already know Olsen won't be re-signed in two years because the Braves are poverty. Man, y'all, it hits 1045 and you guys just turn it up a notch. It's something else. Um, I, I, I definitely think Freddie is, is a more proven player i don't i don't like the word better in, in this case i mean you look at these two guys they're, they're very comparable they're, they're very uh they, they they really are uh i mean olsen's got better power numbers freddie's got more base hits you know that kind of thing uh but i mean freddie is the more proven character hence why he's getting paid what he's getting paid because he's also older right um Let's see, Mab Mab Tyler, you already know that I've liked and fully subscribed for years. Anyone who's new, do the same. This is a great channel, very interactive, and one of the best Braves content creators. Never clickbait. I don't know. I kind of clickbait sometimes, but no, I try not to. Uh, yeah, I, I look, guys. Uh, I appreciate that, Mab Mab. I, I do. Um, I do try to give you guys as much content as I can. Uh, you know, and as much uh, interactive content as I can. I try to do these as much as I can. I just mentioned that I go to work at like 2 a.m. That is true. I go to work at like 2. So it is hard for me to uh, put all this stuff together because my schedule is hectic. I'm still in school, working 40 hours a week, plus some, whatever situation may be. I do my best to get this stuff out there. So please, if you listen to Mab Mab, I would appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Uh, I will be doing more of these throughout the season because, look, I recently described... Uh, I recently uh, described, guys, it's so late. I, I recently, like, discovered the live stream, right? Like, that. that is a fairly new thing. I've been doing pre-recorded stuff and, and pieces for years. But this stuff is where the money is, right? This is where you guys really come in and interact, and I love that. I love that I get to talk baseball with you guys. Because, look, I love talking baseball, period. You know, so if I get interact with you, then that's even better. Uh, show enough, I frequently watch your videos, usually spot on. Usually, I'm always spot on. I'm just kidding. Most of the time, I pan out. I, I have had, I've made some mistakes over the years. Frey Morg, oh my goodness, we got another super chat. We're killing it tonight. Um, pitching moves you'd like to see. Awesome stream, awesome stream. I'm getting a lot of compliments tonight. Uh, yeah, a pitching move I'd like to see. I'll be honest with you, man. Like, I really think the Braves pitching staff as a whole has been pretty good overall, right? Like, I feel like we made mo most of our pitching moves last year, right? Like, our bullpen are over the offseason. Like, our bullpen's solid. Maybe could improve a little bit here and there, but we got Kirby Yates. Matzik's coming back. Will Smith's coming back. 
You know, uh, I mean, the bullpen's solid. I mean, it really is. And then the starting pitching side of things, I think you're, you're more so going to see competition in terms of over the 162, right? Kyle Muller, Tucker Davidson, uh, Mike Sirocco come back. Hopefully he'll fill that spot. Whatever it is, you know, I, I feel like those those guys are going to compete. Tookie Toussaint, I'll throw him in there. Whatever it is, right? Um, th- there, there's a lot of conversation about that. But I, I feel like if... If there is a move to be made, Alex Anthopoulos is going to make the right move. And, you know, a lot of people get on me because I fully trust Alex Anthopoulos, but Alex Anthopoulos has never led me wrong. The only time, because a lot of you guys are new here, I've said this a bunch, the only time, the only time I disagreed with Alex Anthopoulos, the only time I disagreed with Alex Anthopoulos was when we didn't bring Duvall back last year. That was it. And then, let come, of course, later come to find out, budget cuts because of COVID. What are you going to do, right? So, I mean, Alex Anthopoulos is very smart. I see the way he operates. I like the way he operates. He's responsible with money, and I, and, and that's important, right? Like, I hope most of you guys are Braves fans, but if you're a Phillies fan, I'm sorry about it. Uh, the Phillies, a few years ago, stupid money. That was their – they were bragging about spending stupid money. Guess what I thought it was? Stupid. And, and I'm glad that the Braves spend it a little bit more responsibly. Double A has said Olsen will be at the will be at first base. Freddie will not be in Atlanta. Has he said that? Is that like official? Official or is that just uh, Miguel? Let me know. Super chat me. Let me know. Is that official? Official or is that uh, just hearsay? As they as they say, Mad Mad Tyler. The Braves just traded for Matt Olsen today. You have to expect the mob and take advantage of it when it shows up. You have to work the crowd when they love you, right? That's what you're here for. What am I, a musical artist? I'm just kidding. I appreciate it, guys. I, I truly do. You know, nights like these make it worth it. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't expect a mob. I expected a good show, but I didn't expect a mob. I, I expected to be on here 45 minutes or an hour, so this is kind of cool. Uh, maybe I need to start doing a late-night broadcast. Maybe that's what it is. Because all of you guys came in at like one... It got, I know you guys are mad at me, but it literally blew me up. It was like like it was like I had a computer virus. It was It was insane. Uh, let me see. Richard Davis Olson has played like 59 games in the outfield. See, thank you. That's the kind of info I need, Richard. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, the, um, I look, if he can play outfield, that'd be great. I just don't think it's going to happen. Right. Um, I just don't think it's going to happen. Tiger shark looking forward to see Olson's numbers and true as could be a bump also. I think he's going to be good in Truist, man. I mean, I think about that right field line with a left, you know, w- with a power lefty who who pulls. I think he could be really good. I think he might top 40. I really do. Uh, Olsen is the best first base defender in baseball. Yep. And if he refines his bat just a little more, he can be an MVP candidate. You don't move him from first base. Freddie would be a full-time DH. I think you could split time there, although I do think Olsen is the better defender. Freddie wouldn't be happy. And that's if he comes back, guys. Let's, that's under the assumption he comes back. Uh, RLP, the real chosen one, I just shared. Thank you. Uh, I'll have my group raid you next live. Don't do that. Best behavior, please. Uh, we, we try to keep it clean around here. Uh, I'm just kidding. I uh, would love to have them. Uh, Bill Gates, uh, never mind. You're having a conversation with somebody. Um, Freeman's parents are from Ontario. That's true. Cody Morgan, really hope they're going to the... Going for the flip, though, we maintain Freddie while getting cash and a different center field star. I heard something, um, I heard a rumor the other day that we were targeting Brian Reynolds again. And I didn't think about it until he just said that, uh, honestly. Um, I don't know how true it is. I just heard it. I, it was in conversation with somebody. Uh, I do know that they targeted him when they got Richard Rodriguez last year. That's true. Uh, I would love Brian Reynolds. Um, but I think right now Adam Duvall will probably be your center fielder because they're not going to want to put Acuna out there with a hurt leg. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, RLP, the real chosen one. Yeah, I'm funny sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, Richard Davis. Oakland is a pitcher's park, so Olsen hits 40-plus homers. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking about that right field line, man, and I've been the truest. You know, I saw Eddie Rosario knock one out in the, in the postseason right there, and it was a wall scraper, but it went out. And I think about a guy like Olsen who who pulls, and you know I 
I really think he might, you know, if he goes on a roll, man, it might get fun. Uh, it really might. Uh, Tiger Shark. I love that name, by the way. Olsen is five years younger, too. I agree, Cody. Future is bright with Olsen. Oh, here we go again. Here we go with the load me up. Okay. Uh, Future is bright with Olsen. Love Freddy, but obviously purse strings were tight. You could see AA was announcing. Uh, his announcement was bittersweet. He didn't want to. Completely agree. Uh, I, that was real. I know a lot of times, you know, we see things, we wonder, you know, are they just putting on a show? No, that, I have full belief that was real. Um, okay, just wondering what the trade package said back to the Oakland A's won, or did we overpay for Matt Olson? Oh, man, I went through this a bunch. So here's the trade, right? This is what people are saying we've overpaid for. On paper, we've overpaid. I'm going to be real with you. On paper, we've overpaid. On paper, a number one prospect, a number two prospect, a number six prospect, and a number 14 in an organization for one player, I don't care what player, is overpaying unless you're just making a run for one year. That would be overpaying. I don't think so in this case because think about it. When are we going to need Ryan Cusick? I want you to think about that. When are we going to need him? Is it going to be the next five years? He just got drafted this year. Joey S, the same thing. 2019 draft pick. He's number 14. He's nowhere near coming up, at least not in a significant role. Christian Pache, number one prospect. He's had his chances. That's the true package is Pache and Langoliers. The A's are preparing for well into the future. Well into the future. Like five years into the future. And that's fine. That works for them. It's not for us, though. And I, and I say us, I mean the Braves. Uh, I don't think we overpaid. Uh, that's just my honest opinion. Richard Davis, need to get Kimbrell. You know, my dad says the same thing all the time. And look, I love Kimbrell. I just don't want to overpay. And I know we just got done talking about overpaying. I just don't want to overpay for Kimbrell. He's great. He's probably going to the Hall of Fame. He should. Uh, by the way, Billy Wagner for Hall of Fame. Uh, and I'll go to my grave saying that. Uh, best left-handed reliever ever. Uh, but yeah, Kimbrel, maybe. I, I wouldn't be opposed. I just think our bullpen's good now. Like I, I, I'm good with our pit. If something happens, maybe Kimbrel. But I, I think there's a lot going on. Oh, we got a Nats fan. What do you think about the Nats going into the season? This is going to be fun. Uh, who's on the Nationals now? Outside of Juan Soto. That's what I think about the Nationals going into the season. Uh, RLP, the real chosen one. Is Soroka in the injury-prone conversation? Sure, sure, uh, yeah, um, I think so. As of right now, I, I think this year uh, will be an indication of what his future is. If, if he if he somehow re-tears it, I think at that point it's like Johnny Venters with his three-and-a-half Tommy Johns. You know, like at that point I, I really worry. Now it's like, okay, I mean, he's had a setback. Luckily, it was during 2020 and that, you know, garbage of a season. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. But that 60-game season was garbage. Uh, Pache wasn't showing the batting we had hoped for. Selling high, in my opinion. Shane was a loss. Shane. Shay was a loss, sorry. But I still think we did well to keep as close to Freddie's first base as possibly given. Yeah, I agree. Like, if we're not going to get Freddie, the only other one is Matt Olson. I mean, that's it. That's the only one that even makes sense, right? I mean, that's literally it. So I'm good with it. Uh, I love Freddie, but yeah, I, I love it. Um, let's see what we got. Paul Charles, hello, I am new to the channel. I was curious about what would happen to Freddie Freeman. Um, he's probably going to sign to another team, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I would love, I would love for Freddie not to do that. But I got a feeling he's going to. That would be my honest answer. If he comes to the Braves, you have two ways. Either they trade Ozuna and one of him or Olsen becomes a DH, or they flip Olsen and trade him to another team and get our money back and maybe get some new prospects that maybe, you know, the Braves like more, I guess. And, you know, we go from there. Uh, but I don't think so. <sighs> Smith Happens. I like that name. He said, I had to be careful. He, he said that they made a trade for Matt to be the first baseman. He, they did, and that's what he's going to say. Alex Anthopoulos is always careful with his words, right? I have to be quiet, guys. Uh, Alex Anthopoulos, 
is going to be careful with his words, anything he says. Any decision he's going to defend. But you can't tell me that if Freeman walked in and said, hey, I'll take a pay cut to be, be, be back with the Braves, he wouldn't do it. Who wouldn't take Freeman on a pay cut? I don't care who you got on your team. At that point, you don't think you can trade Matt Olson? I do. Um, I love Freddie, but either way, I think we're going to be fine. Like, that that's the thing, right? Like, I, I, I think it's going to be fine, personally. Um, <laughs> Double A has earned the trust of Braves country. Thank you, Jameson. Thank you. He had my trust a long time ago because I like the way he thought. I watched a couple of interviews with him. And like early on, and he just made sense, you know, and he's proven himself. If the trade deadline did nothing else last year, he proved Alex Adopolis is worth. Uh, he won the MVP in my book. Um, Tiger Shark, I assume you're referring to the late night show idea. Yes, please. We all work. I work too. I do. <laughs> so we'll see. I can't guarantee it. But if we have this kind of, you know, explosion every night, then yeah, I'll do it. Uh, I'll come out late. Uh, that's fine. Um, Alexander Adkins, Freddie would be better in left field than Ozuna. I didn't mean to read that. You tricked me. I didn't mean to read that. Nolan Miller. I know that guy from somewhere. Uh, repeat 2022. You know, you're going to have me on my soapbox now. I think we have a very good chance to repeat 2022. Even if we don't re-sign Jock, if we don't sign Eddie, if we don't sign Solaire, if we just go get two random decent free agents, right? Whatever. Fill the outfield. I don't care. You got Acuna coming back. He wasn't here for the last part of the last year. You got a bullpen that's stacked right now. You got Matt Olson replacing Freddie, which is either an upgrade or a slight downgrade in whatever your opinion is, which is still consistent. You got Marcelo Zuna coming back. You've got, hopefully, Mike Soroka coming back. You got Charlie Morton, Max Free. We have a very good chance. Now, it's got to pan out. It's got to turn out the way we hope. But, yeah, we have a very good chance. Uh, we'll have to see. But I, I certainly hope we do. Uh, but, yeah, I think I think we have a good chance. Mab Mab wants the late night broadcast. That's where most people show up. Best business decision for my channel. The best business decision. Okay. But I'm going to hold you to that. If you're not here, you will be receiving a notification. Saying that you're blocked. I'm just kidding. Uh, let me scroll back up. Oh my goodness. Y'all don't want me to go to sleep at all. All right. I got to find my place. I'm sorry, guys. This thing updates and then it just disappears. All right. Nolan says he likes to trade even though he loves Freddy. I completely agree. Uh, completely, completely, completely agree. Uh, when it comes to Freddie, like, I, I think we're all going to cherish the time with Freddie, much like a lot of people cherish the time with Dale Murphy. But I mentioned earlier, you know, I read him off, <laughs> just this list of players that we think about and, and, you know, frankly, immortalize a lot when it comes to the Braves. John Smoltz, played for other teams. Tom Glavin, played for other teams. Hank Aaron, played for other teams. Phil Necro, played for other teams. Greg Maddox, didn't even start as a Brave, nor did he finish as one. Dale Murphy went to the Phillies, then to the Rockies. Andrew Jones, the list just keeps going. So, look, this is not a knock on Freddie for not doing it. This is a this is a common thing. I love Freddie as a as a ball player. I truly do. I love the fact that he spent most of his career with the Braves. I wish he had spent his whole one if if this is going to be what it's going to be. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Jeff Barry, that's a new name. Uh, ball cap sports. I watched him the other night. Ball cap sports is speculating if Freeman gets signed with the Braves, he could play third, Riley to left field, and Olsen on first. You know, Freeman played third. I watched Freddie play third live, actually, now that I think about it. Freeman played third a few years ago when we got, uh, Matt, uh, was it Matt Adams? It was Matt Adams, yeah, Matt Adams. Uh, let me look up his stat. I want to look. Up, I'm curious what his defensive stats for that were. Uh, to tell you the, just the truth, I don't believe he had a mistake. I don't think there was an error. Uh, he's got a good arm. Uh, that that potentially could be a possibility if the Braves got him. That's under the assumption that he did. I I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, you know, I, I think we're all under the assumption that Freddie Freeman's not coming back. I think we've all accepted that, right? Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, so 
Is there by position? Give me by position. Come on, baseball reference. I don't see anything. I see DH a good bit. Um, no third base year. What year was that? Oh, here it is. Here we go. All right. 16 games at third base. He had 12 complete games, 136 innings. He had, let me see, third base, third base. Where are you at? 35 defensive chances, 13 putouts, fielding percentage of 971. So, maybe, <laughs> but I don't think so. Uh, honestly, I, I don't, um, if I'm being real with you. Uh, that That's, I mean, it's a very small sample size. I, I don't think he's a third baseman. I think he's a first baseman. Freddie's athletic, but I certainly don't think as he gets older, he's going to want to play third. Uh, that, I mean, that's the hot corner, right? I, I don't think that's going to make sense for him. Um, but I wouldn't hate it. Maybe could Olsen play third? Uh, somebody mentioned he could play outfield. Um, that that might be something. But Jeff Barry, by the way, uh, you're new here, so please please subscribe. I uh, appreciate that. Familiar Films, also a new name. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Asked if Freddie would still wear his good luck chipper shirt wherever he goes. Someone on Reddit replied that it goes to Matt. Does it? I mean, I mean, Freddie played with Freddie played with Chipper. That's different. Uh, that guy. Uh, I don't want Freeman for two hundred million. That's a bold statement. I would give him two hundred. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I would have a week ago. I would right now, um, if it means he's coming back. Olsen hit 40 homers in a bigger ballpark, but the AL West doesn't have the pitching of the NL East. This is true. Um, this is true. The NL East is going to be tough. I don't know if he's going to hit a bunch, but I got a feeling he he's going to hit. A, he's going to. I don't know if he'll match 39 because I mean that that's just tough. Um, I'm going to look up the dimensions. Hang on a second. I'm going to look up the dimensions of the stadium and tell you something. So we're, we're looking for the right field line. I wish I could show you real quick, but I can't. Uh, I'm not quite as fluid on that. Um, so right field is 388 in, uh, in, in Oakland. Um, so it's 388. Just remember that. Let's look, look up Truist Park. Here we go. So 388 versus... 325. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's like a 60 foot difference. Yeah. I, I think he's going to have his fair share. I mean, he probably hit a lot of fly balls in, in Oakland that would have been home runs. I mean, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> granted, he's not, he's going to face harder pitching, like you said, but that's interesting. Uh, that's very, very, that's a, thank you for that. That's a good point. I'm glad I looked that up. That's a 60 foot difference in right field. Um, so we'll see. Um, Richard Davis says, hope we get Brian Reynolds, but it will cost a lot. Yeah, because the Pirates are going to want prospects. Uh, Mad Mad would also love Brian Reynolds. We need some extensions if we're going to keep trading this farm away. I agree with you. Um, I completely agree with you. I want to see Riley extended. I wouldn't mind seeing Dans be extended. Um, although, if we were going to shop, I wouldn't mind Trevor's story. And that's just me giving you some behind baseball on deck stuff. Uh, wouldn't mind that at all. Well, we're, we're, we're almost going for three hours. Good Jesus. Okay. Uh, yeah, Paul, I'm with you. I think it's probably down to the Blue Jays and Dodgers as well. Uh, that, that seems to be the make the most sense. Blue Jays seem to be going the hardest. And to be honest with you, I hope the Blue Jays get him. I don't want to see Freddie Freeman in the Dodgers uniform. I really don't. Um, Nolan, I am so glad this is your favorite YouTube channel, considering you've known me since birth. That I appreciate that. Uh, if you guys want to mob somebody, mob that guy, Nolan Miller, mob him. Uh, don't count out the Padres on Freeman. Really? Where are you hearing this, Alexander? Where, where are you hearing this? Uh, is there, is there a source? Do I need to look it up? Cause I'll do it. Um, Cody, how well do I think Olsen fits in the clubhouse? You know, that's a really good question, but it's a really good question for Matt Olsen. <laughs> I don't know the man, unfortunately. I'm sure he'll be fine. I mean, there's not anybody that doesn't fit in the Braves clubhouse, is there? I mean, I feel like they kind of have a aura about them that, that does well with anybody, don't they? It seems to me, anyway. Uh, RLP, make sure you put out your social media info so we can follow. Okay, y'all are going to laugh, but I'm going to put it in the chat. My This is my Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> 
It is bubblegum underscore Jesus, okay? And I just put it in the chat. It should just pop in. Anyway, it'll pop up in a second. Yeah, I just put it in. So bubblegum underscore Jesus. That's Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to go follow, go ahead and do that. Uh, it should be there. Yep, it's there. So that's my, again, Twitter and Instagram. Um, Paul Charles. Oh, also, like and subscribe. Uh, Paul Charles, I seen Freddie's wife sent out an Instagram showing her and other women at the Dodger Stadium. Have you seen? Have you guys seen them? Uh, my brother mentioned it earlier. Uh, I was talking to him, and he mentioned it because I sleep throughout the day uh, to to prepare for this and to go to work. Uh, so a lot of times I'm sleeping during the day. So I literally woke up at like three o'clock to the news and got up and started writing the script for tonight uh, for this. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, if you need my Instagram, it's also in the description down below. Um, let me see, Paul, I think it's going, hang on, sorry, I lost the place. I think it's going to be the Dodgers and the Braves in the 2022 NLCS again. I wouldn't doubt it, although I'm going to be honest with you, the Giants really surprised me last year, and I think they just got Carlos Rodon too, didn't they? So I, that might be, I mean, they gave the Dodgers a run for their money. I mean, granted they're down buster, but they gave them a run for their money, man. Yeah, hit, hit that bell for notifications. Do what Knitter Knitter says right there. Uh, Andrew Choi. This sets us up with a lot of flexibility in the free agent market. I'm thinking we snag one or two outfielders or one big stud since uh, as Correa is a short-term deal. Mm. Correa. Uh, you know, I'm just going to propose this. I don't want this to be taken any further than right here. Um, what if... And this is another one of my what ifs. Uh, I don't do these very often, but what if we sign Correa to a short term deal? And I'm completely just joking here, but what if? What if we can sign Correa to a short term deal, move Dansby to third, Ozzy stays at second, and we move Riley to first? Or, and, oh, well. Well, no, we have Olsen now. What if we move Riley to left field? Just going to throw that one out there. I don't think it's going to stick, but we'll go with it. Uh, why not Freeman Braves? Why from Rail Fanning Jonah? Uh, yeah, me too, buddy. Nelson Cruz, what happened with Nelson Cruz? Uh, did something happen with Nelson Cruz? Hang on. Do I need to Google it or is it just? I'll Google it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nelson Cruz reached a yeah. I forgot about that. He reached a one-year deal with the Nationals. Forgot about that. I'm not scared of that. It's nothing. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm, I run a Braves channel, guys. I mean, what am I supposed to say about the Nationals? Uh, Mad Mab, I would go to my grave saying Billy Wagner for Hall of Fame next season. Me too. I mean, the dude, I did the numbers. I did a video. Go look at it. It's, it's on the channel. Look up my name and uh, Billy Wagner. It'll come right up. Um, the dude had like, he, he's up there in stats with Rivera. I mean, all of them. There's like eight relievers in the Hall of Fame, which I think is ridiculous based on the way the game's changing. I, I find it absolutely ridiculous. And to be honest with you, if Craig Kimbrell's got any chance of uh, making it into the Hall, Billy Wagner's got to go first. I, like, And I want them both in, but he's got to go in first. It's the only way it makes sense. Granted, the Hall of Fame is pretty arbitrary. So, you know, it, it's kind of... I like the Hall of Fame. I've been to the Hall of Fame. I've... I've got I've gotten a film in the Hall of Fame. I really like it a lot. They got good people that work there. But the voters aggravate me. Y'all aggravate me. If you're out there, you aggravate me. You, you aggravate me. Uh Nats have Josh Bell, Nelson Cruz, and Steve, St St Steven Strawberg. Okay. Uh I'm just messing with you, man. I know you guys got some folks. Uh I think you guys might be pretty good. Y'all just sold so much last year that it, it's kind of like, I'll be honest with you. I've not lost respect. That's not a good way to say it. I've sort of just put you in the back of my mind because the, I mean, you got to understand when when the Mets sign Scherzer and you know they're they're always buying folks. And to be honest with you, they led the National League. They led the National League East um, like half the year last year until we finally topped them. You know, and it's just tough. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm more concerned about the Phillies. Than, than I am the Nats. Uh, but I think the Braves are going to be the better team. But we'll see. I mean, the Braves are the defending World Series champs, son. So we'll we'll see. Um, uh, Chicago has... Okay, this is about Kimbrell. 
Chicago has a reliever. Kimbrell won't want to play second fiddle. He's owed $16 million this year, his last year. If the Braves eat some of that money, it won't cost much. This is true, but doesn't Chicago have a, have a chance of a... Uh, let's see something real quick. Chicago White Sox. Doesn't Chicago have a chance of winning that division? And not to mention, you have two extra... Uh, you have two extra teams on each side of the bracket now in the postseason. I mean, yeah, they're in there with the Tigers, the Guardians, the Twins, and the Royals. I think they got a shot. So to me, I, th I think it'll cost more than you think. Um, but, you know, who knows? I mean, I'd love to get Kimbrell back. Make no mistake. I I'd love to do it. Um, <sighs> Paul Charles, I think it will come down to the Dodgers, Braves, Red Sox to get him. Uh, in terms of Kimbrell, yeah, probably. Mad man, man, be respectful. Be respectful. Nelson Cruz is not 87 years old. <laughs> uh, he, I think Nelson Cruz will be fine. Uh, Crimson Tide, 810. When will Acuna be back? Starting opening day or by end of April? If it's up to Ronald Acuna, he will be up. He will be back up and running on opening day. But, you know, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's up to the trainers, right? Like, he thinks he's ready. Um, I think the eye test tells me he's ready, but at the same time, I haven't seen him run. I've seen him hit fine, but who knows? I mean, he hit a ball off like the scoreboard today in, in batting practice, but that, that doesn't tell me how his leg's doing, you know, and I want to make sure he can run and do stuff because that's what hurt him last time. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Tiger Shark. Last I heard was back in May. Uh, that's the last I heard too. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, let me scroll back up. Let me scroll back up. Sorry, you guys comment a lot today. All right, Richard Davis, they got Olsen in case Freeman didn't sign. They won't trade Olsen if Freeman signs. I agree with that. I think if Freeman signs, they're going to find somewhere both. It's Freeman from California, Canada. Do you guys know I heard both? Uh, Kevin Crispin, the idea that Billy Wagner did not get 100% of the Hall of Fame votes like Mariano did did is mind-boggling it really is he's one of the uh to be honest with you i think he's one of the biggest snubs in, in history and, it, and it's so like under the radar let me let me you know what we're on a billy wagner train now because now i'm gonna be up all night anyway um let me see yeah the guy's got a 231 career era over 400 saves 1100 strikeouts i mean he let i, I just i don't get it i, I don't get it you know, I just don't get it. Mariano Rivera, undoubtedly one of the best relievers of all time. But this guy's right there with him. And he finished his career on a positive note. I, I don't get it. I never will get it, and I'm going to argue it till the end of time. But I'm right there with you, Kevin. Jameson, to be honest, took me about three hours to for the Freddy news to for me to finally be able to understand that thought process. Yeah, I'm going to miss him too. Zach Anderson, just found the channel, man. Huge Braves fan. Look forward to having discussions with you guys. You'll be having a lot of discussions with me if you subscribe, so make sure to do that. Uh, of course, also check out the other stuff as well. Paul, the Braves GM, was in tears addressing the Olsen trade and Freeman letting him go. Yeah, it says a lot about Freddie, I think. Bender of strings, clubhouse leadership doesn't show up on a balance sheet or an analytics report, but what you lose if Freddie is gone. But that's what you lose if Freddie is gone. Does Olsen fill that void? That I don't know. That 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 I don't know. I mean, does he? I mean, but uh, uh, on the same token, I mean, I I could say that that Jock was a lot of that last year. You know, um, not you know in terms of you know he he maybe not you know in terms of behavior, uh, exactly, but in terms of getting getting them riled up and ready and believing in themselves, it was a lot of Jock. And I think they they've turned over a new a new feat in that, but we'll we'll see, you know. Um, Max, I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Uh, Tiger, just found you guys. Good content. Was looking for some discussions on this trade, and you were live. I'll be back. Thank you. Tell your friends. Thank you so much. Richard Davis, the Braves are still kind of young and getting better every game. Yes, the Braves repeat. Braves and Dodgers are top five powerhouse teams. I think the Braves are finally getting some respect. You know, that's something that's been missing. Uh, you know, the Braves, every year, uh, three years in a row, they won the National League East, and they were predicted not to do it the next year. And it's like, 
why? <laughs> so now they won the World Series and they're predicted to do it again. It's like I that's how it works. You know, you, you get attention and magically you start getting the votes. Uh Rail Fanning Jonah says Freddie is the only reason why I'm a Braves fan. Well spell his name right. I'm just messing with you, man. Uh Max Cruz, welcome to the Olsen era, boys. All right, we're here. Um, Paul Charles. You have a lot of baseballs in the background. Are they all from signed players? Are they all signed from players? Not all of them are players. Uh, this is my favorite one, and it's actually uh, Harry Carey. Uh, that would be a longtime broadcaster for the Cubs. Holy cow, that guy. Uh, he's also the grandfather of Chip Carey um, for the Braves. It's one of my favorite pieces. Uh, but no, they're not all from players. Um, most of them are. Uh, Bob Costas is up there. I got a lot of broadcasters because, you know, what I do. Uh, Bob Euchre's up there, Marty Brenneman. But yeah, I got Hank, A-Rod, Willie Mays. You know, I got Derek Jeter up there. I, I got a lot of folks. I got a ball. Uh, there's a ball kind of in the middle up there. It's signed by the Big Red Machine. It's signed by uh, Pete Rose, Johnny Bench, Tony Perez, and Joe Morgan. That's probably my top, top one. Uh, but I got I got a lot up there. Thanks for the question, though. Yeah, I used to do a segment called Autograph of the Day where I'd show it off. Maybe I should bring that back. Um, Freddie, Freddie is not greedy. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, Richard Davis, no, Riley won't play the outfield. I don't think so either. I just threw it out there. Uh, I'm going to start scrolling a little faster. Mav, Mav, you're trying to keep me. I, I can't do this, buddy. I got to go lay down. I got, at least got to take a shower for work. Mad Mad, we can all sleep when we are dead. In 14 billion years of the universe existing, we are going to sleep for over 13 billion years of that. We have to, uh, to absorb every second we can of our limited supply. Yeah, but I don't. All right, I'm probably going to wrap this up sooner rather than later, boys. Uh, I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can before I go, but you guys keep blowing me up. Um, Paul Charles, I just saw a comment on my phone. No, I do not have a Vince Scully. If you have a Vince Scully that you would like to donate... I will take it. Um, Tyler, do you think the Braves will re-sign... Well, not re-sign. Do you think the Braves will sign Michael Conforto? He has been great in the past, and he is young. When the market stops showing love to Conforto and the Braves, get him on a short-term double-A special. Maybe. 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 I don't know. Um, I really don't know. I mean, that that would be... You know, if the market doesn't just eat him up, you know, um, but I got a feeling they're going to. Uh, no, I don't have a Discord. Uh, is Story going to the Twins? Do we got a, Is that official? Official? Um, can anyone tell me if Freeman and Schwarber to Blue Jays? I haven't heard anything. Jameson, thanks for that. I if I'm the best channel, then I appreciate that. I do I do appreciate that a lot. All because of you guys. Uh, oh snap, good lord. All right, I kind of lost my spot, but I think I found it. Tiger Shark, Tyler, what's with the Dodgers hat? You need to hide that. We don't want Freddie there. Uh, hang on a second. This is actually good juju, believe it or not. So, as you can see, this is a Dodgers hat. Uh, but it's signed right here. Uh, it's kind of you can kind of see it. It's, if I get the glare out of it, it is signed by Al Downing, uh, dated April eighth, nineteen seventy four. If you can put that together, I'll be proud of you. Uh, but it is actually a Braves piece. Uh, he gave up the home run to Hank Aaron uh, that beat Babe Ruth's record. Yeah, Bill Gates. I saw that. I, I saw that earlier that it was going to happen. I, I saw that it was likely going to be today. Um, I, I hate to hear that Scott Hall passing away at the age of 80 at, at 63. That's, uh, that's, that's never a good thing. I, I hate it for him. You know, he made a big comeback, uh, health wise. And, you know, I, I hate that it had to end today. Uh, he, he's also not very old. So it's, it's, a, it's a sad day for wrestling fans. Um, and by the way, guys, I, I have become recently a pretty big wrestling fan. Uh, I've gotten back into it a bit. Um, to be honest, Paul Charles, I, I like you, Paul. To be honest, I think the Mets overpaid for Max Scherzer. Just my opinion. He should have stayed with the Dodgers. Better chance of a World Series bid than the Mets. I agree. I completely agree. I think he probably ticked off the Dodgers. 
because uh, he did not pitch hardly at all in the last postseason. But I think the Dodgers did not use him right. And I think he didn't like the way they used him. Uh, so that's part of it. Uh, not to mention the Mets historically, you know, have a good pitching uh, regimen. They also got a brand new manager in Buck Showalter, which that's what worries me about the Mets is, is Buck Showalter and Scherzer. Uh, I think they actually might make a run. All right, guys, I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to have to wrap it up there. Uh, thank you guys so much. As of right now, Freddie has not signed anywhere. Uh, nothing else has happened. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with that. You guys have been awesome tonight. I mean, I, I'm so thrilled that you guys came out tonight like you did. Uh, surprised me. I thought I'd be in bed about an hour ago, and you guys did not let me go. Uh, so I appreciate it. Uh, with that, uh, I, we're out of here. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. We will. If Freddie goes somewhere, I'll do my best to get on a live and talk to you guys as soon as it happens if I'm home. But that's all I can promise. So, uh with that, uh, make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, all that good stuff, tell your friends, and of course, we'll see you later next time right here at On Deck.